The following is a presentation of CBS Sports. Nebraska, America's heartland. This picturesque part of the country has been the gracious host to college baseball's greatest moments. In 1979, Cal State Fullerton won its first NCAA College World Series. Five years later, they won another championship at Rosenblatt Stadium. Today, the Titans are in search of their third title in as many decades. Cal State Fullerton is the top-ranked team of the nation. Their road to today's championship game has been an untarnished 3-0 at the College World Series. Their opponents are the University of Southern California Trojans, the all-time winningest team at the College World Series with 11 national championships. Last night, under a full moon and a slow rain, USC advanced to the title game with a heroic five-hit performance by junior shortstop Gabe Alvarez. And some timely defense up the middle as USC defeated Miami 7-3. Today, the Trojans seek their first College World Series championship since 1978. It's a breezy day in Omaha, Nebraska, and a record-setting crowd of nearly 23,000 is expected at Rosenblatt Stadium to watch college baseball's national championship game. If you live in Southern California, you might not need a program today. The University of Southern California and Cal State Fullerton are only 40 miles apart. And today they meet for the national title on a chilly day in Omaha. 59 degrees as we approach game time. The wind will probably be a factor. It's blowing out to right field at 18 miles per hour and gusting up to 25. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough. It's great to have you with us. Cal State Fullerton is the big favorite here today. They've had the much easier ride through this College World Series. As a matter of fact, USC advanced to this game out of the loser's bracket. They lost their first game here in Omaha this year to Miami, but have won four in a row, including an elimination game against the Hurricanes last night. While Cal State Fullerton, the number one team in the country, dominated bracket two going 3-0 outscoring the opposition during that time by a margin of 28 to 6. I'm joined today by Jeff Torborg. And Jeff, as we look at the Titans, the number one team in the country, it's tough to spot any weaknesses. They're so solid in all aspects of the game. They're just a club that do not beat themselves. And the SC club, on the other, other hand, have not done very well from the pitching and defensive side, but have gotten here with a record 11 home runs offensively. They're going to have to pick up their defense and pitching to, to really be competitive today I believe that's for sure the Trojans of coach Mike Gillespie have made 11 errors in the five games here at the College World Series their pitching staff ERA is nearly seven but they're here today contending for the national title against Cal State Fullerton we're pleased to be joined here in Omaha today by our colleague Michelle Tafoya Michelle thanks Sean well a few minutes ago I had a chance to talk with coaches of both of these teams and Southern Cal coach Mike Gillespie told me that after beating Miami last night he heard from a number of former players including Seattle strikeout King Randy Johnson Gillespie also got emotional as he told me that he's already given his team his pre and post game pep talk he won't have time to talk to them much after today's game so he's already told them how proud he is of them now on the other hand Fullerton coach Augie Guerrero told me that his team had a bad practice yesterday because they were tense which is really uncharacteristic of this team so in order to get loosened up today on the bus, they decided to blare some music on the way over. That included the Rolling Stones' Honky Tonk Woman. They want to follow up a bad practice with a good, loose game. Starting lineups, we'll be back with that right after this. CBS Sports coverage of the College World Series Championship game is sponsored by Charles Schwab and Company, helping investors help themselves. Mobile Motor Oil, changing oil for over 125 years. And by Domino's Ultimate Deep Dish Pizza. Today's national championship game is between the number six seed in this College World Series, USC, and the number one seed, Cal State Fullerton. Let's look at today's starting lineup for the Trojans, coached by Mike Gillespie in his ninth season as head coach. He has Walter Dawkins leading off and playing center field. Paul Cruz is the DH. Gabe Alvarez with five hits last night is the shortstop. The cleanup hitter, right fielder Jeff Jenkins. Jock Jones is in left field, batting fifth. Batting sixth and doing the catching, Chad Moeller. Greg Walbridge is the first baseman hitting seventh. 
Batting eight, the third baseman Ernie Diaz. And the second baseman, Wes Rachels, hits ninth. The Cal State Fullerton defense sets up like this. Tony Miranda will be in left field. Mark Kotze in center. Jeremy Giambi in right. The third baseman is Tony Martinez. Jack Jones is a shortstop. Joe Frazier is the second baseman. <laughs> D.C. Olsen is the first baseman. Brian Lloyd is the catcher. And, of course, the pitcher is All-American. Ted Silva. And the Titans just now getting ready to take the field. They started seeding the teams of the College World Series in 1988. And since then, no team seeded number one, two, or three has won the national championship. So Cal State Fullerton is trying to overcome that history this afternoon. There are rules differences between college baseball and the professional game. Here in the college game, they use aluminum bats. You're not allowed to roll block on the bases. Each player wears a double ear flap helmet at the plate, and the use of tobacco products is prohibited. The umpires are Ken Eldridge from Atlanta, Georgia, behind the plate. Dale Williams of Signal Hill, California at first. Wade Ford from Austin, Texas at second. Bob Homolka from Salina, Kansas at third. Along the left field line, Rich Fetchett, he's from Trenton, Michigan, and John Bible from Austin, Texas, works the right field line. And these umpires have done a terrific job during this College World Series. It's been a record-setting College World Series in many aspects, particularly offensively. Cal State Fullerton with a chance to set the all-time record for highest batting average in a College World Series. They have hit 385 through their first three games, while over five games here, USC is at 348. The eight teams combined have hit 305. That's the highest combined batting average for the field in College World Series history. And against those imposing offensive numbers, the impressive numbers of today's Cal State Fullerton starting pitcher, Ted Silva. Sean, Ted Silva has really had a fantastic year. 17 and 1 this year. He also has six saves to go along with that. He's an All-American. He pitched uh, last Saturday and got blown all over this ballpark early in the game, but he stayed with it, held his club in, and they ended up winning that ball game six to five. That was against Stanford. Ted leads the nation in wins with 17. One more than Ryan Holla of Auburn. And as Jeff mentioned, he's a first-team All-American. By virtually any standard you'd compare these teams, you'd make Cal State Fullerton the favorite today. They would appear to have the pitching advantage. They're a better fielding team. And they certainly match up with USC offensively. Both teams terrific with the bat. Augie Garrido hoping for his third national title. And the championship game is underway. Silva's first pitch. To Walter Dawkins is a called strike one. USC center fielder hitting 261 in this College World Series. And he's quickly behind in the count. 0 and 2. Jeff mentioned Silva struggled in his first start against Stanford, the 6 to 5 win here last Saturday. That's his only prior appearance in this College World Series. He gave up three runs in the first inning and settled down thereafter. Ted wound up working seven and a third innings in the ball game. Gave up 12 hits and five runs, but three of those were in the first. And Augie Garrido said he showed a lot of courage in that game. A lot of young men would have been rattled and wouldn't have survived the first. He fought his way through it. Bounce down to third. Tony Martinez to D.C. Olsen for the out. The road to this game for Cal State Fullerton through bracket two, three wins, a nip and tuck battle with Stanford, a come from behind six to five win in the first game, then two blowouts of Tennessee, while USC came through the losers bracket, lost to Miami, then posted four straight wins, the last two against the Hurricanes, to advance to the national championship game for the first time since 1978. Paul Cruz, the DH, is the batter. He's hitting just 182 in this College World Series. We should point out, it's been a while since USC has been here. But in the 
12 previous appearances in the championship game for the Trojans. They've won 11 times. They're 11 and 1 all time in the national title game. And the fly ball from Cruz caught by Tony Miranda. Matter of fact, the last seven times the Trojans have come to Omaha to participate in the College World Series, they've won it all. That's quite a record when you think about it. They haven't been here in a while, but those teams were, when they got here, they didn't mess around. Now, Gabe Alvarez was three for 17 in this College World Series and really struggling with his confidence prior to last night when he had five hits to tie the College World Series record. Two outs, base is empty, no score in the top of the first. Down to third. Martinez stayed with it. A one, two, three, first inning for Silvin. Sharp contrast to his start against Stanford last Saturday. After a half inning, the Trojans nothing. The Titans coming up. I know there really is something about being a soldier. It started the moment I got here. The word can't vanished. This was advanced training. This was the training I came in for. My folks are proud of what I've done. I'm proud of who I am. I'm a soldier. They test car batteries here. They test pickup trucks here. And when they test yard machines, they go here. Dave Spivey's house. <laughs> MTD tractors, chipper shredders, lawn mowers, and edgers tackle the toughest jobs. Look for MTD yard machines at retailers near you. MTD. Wow! I like it! MTD yard machines, American-made, American-owned. The Trojans went in order in the top of the first. Now the Titans come to bat for the first time for head coach Augie Garrido in his 20th year as head coach at Cal State Fullerton. He has Tony Miranda leading off and playing left field. C.J. Ankrum is the D.H. Mark Kotze, the All-American center fielder, bats third. Jeremy Giambi in right field is the cleanup hitter. The catcher, Brian Lloyd, bats fifth. Batting sixth at second base, Joe Frazier. D.C. Olsen is at first base. Jack Jones, the shortstop. And the third baseman, Tony Martinez, bats ninth. And the defense for SC sets up this way. Jack Jones is the left fielder. Walter Dawkins is center fielder. All-American Jeff Jenkins will play right field. Ernie Diaz is the third baseman. All-American shortstop Gabe Alvarez. Wes Rachels is the second baseman. Greg Walbridge is the first baseman. Chad Moeller is the catcher. And Brian Cooper is the starting pitcher. Cooper is a junior from Glendora, California. 20 years old, 6'1", 175 pounds, making his second start in this College World Series. For the season, he's 8-2 in 19 starts, a 4.67 ERA. More hits allowed than innings pitched, but nearly a strikeout per inning for Cooper, who pitched Tuesday night against Florida State and gave up five runs on four hits and five walks in five innings in the Trojans 16 to 11 win over the Seminole. And Tony Miranda digs in to lead off the home half of the first. He's hitting 385 in the College World Series. And the first pitch from Cooper is a strike. The top of the order has been terrific here in the College World Series for the Titans. That trio has combined to hit 516 over three games. Owen, two. Sean, this is an interesting story. Brian Cooper, only two years ago, was a shortstop in junior college and a very good one. They made him a pitcher. He's only been pitching for two years, and here he is starting a College World Series final. It's be interesting to see how he responds to it. He's really got good stuff. Coach Gillespie thinks he's going to be a future star. Mike told us yesterday his only concern about Brian Cooper is does he have the confidence right now to pitch in the national championship game? You think Coach Gillespie got a positive 
answer in that regard in the regionals when Cooper won both of his starts and was the MVP of the West Regional in Fresno, California. He won the first game of the regional and the final game against Long Beach State that got the Trojans back to Omaha for the first time since 1978. I think one other question would be also he's hard he throws hard fastball is in the 90s and a good slider but he doesn't have a real good changeup yet and the 2 2 lined in the center by Miranda but Tony Miranda the senior from Linwood California is aboard as the first base runner of the ball game and what that does when you have a guy who likes the fastball like Miranda and the front end of this order, there's a good fastball hitter. That ball is hard out over the plate, and he lines it in the left center field. You have to have, when you've got a good fastball hitting team, you have to be able to change speeds. Miranda at first. No score in the bottom of the first. And Cooper will work next to C.J. Ankrum, the D.H., and the freshman took strike one. Ankrum platoons as the DH, Robert Matos. And he's hitting 500 in this college World Series. Been up six times with three hits. And Miranda is back to first. Well, we'll see pretty soon whether Augie Garrido's philosophy of trying to score first in the ball game. He will bunt early at times and hit and run as he doesn't hit and run as much as he likes to bunt, but he'll also try to run his his base runners. And Miranda has stolen 19 bases this year. It is a bunt by Ankrum, not very far in front of the plate. The throw to second from Moeller goes into center field. Miranda won't try to go to third. And first and second and nobody else for Cal State Fullerton. Moeller will occasionally make the spectacular play, but he's also prone to the error coming out from behind the plate. He got out from behind that plate in a hurry, and he let that ball fly, and it just tailed on him. He didn't quite get his body closed, but, um, you know, the nerves are going right now, and he jumped on that new uh, beforehand that if he had a chance to field the ball, he would try to force the man at second base, which what you have to do in this game is think ahead. It's a sacrifice and a fielder's choice. They did not charge Moeller with an error since the runner didn't try to go to third and probably would have been safe at second anyway. Moeller, as a catcher, has made 15 errors, and that's a bunch. And a long fly ball by Mark Coste. At the wall, Dawkins, home run. no doubt about that ball that ball was hit with the wind over the backdrop in right center field that ball was crushed and Mark Kotze is not an All-American for nothing and you can see in this replay that's a fastball down the middle of the plate basically and Kotze did not miss it boy look at him get, keep his head down and get the head of that bat out that's why he's an All-American and he's only a sophomore and he's a co-collegiate player of the year in one publication. It's his 20th home run of the season. As we saw last week, he is also an outstanding closer for the Titans pitching staff. And Brian Cooper is trailing 3 nothing very quickly. And in the last 10 national championship games, the team that has scored first has won every time. Jeremy Giambi, the right fielder. And he's up there with a count of one ball and one strike. Sean, at the top of the show, we were talking about how SC's defense has not been good. And unfortunately, this young pitcher has had to have the defense to be perfect behind him, and, and he wasn't able to have that done. The catcher, Chad Moeller, couldn't make the play. Trojans should be able to make this play. Dawkins under the fly ball, and Giambi is the first out of the inning. Look at what the Titans have done in the first three innings of this College World Series. They're averaging 9.3 runs over the first three innings of their three games. They've hit 444 and five home runs. Do you think Augie Garrido agrees with 
Earl Weaver, the three-run home run, is a nice weapon. Mm -hmm. He does now, that's for sure. <laughs> well, he says he likes to bunt and play for one run, as we saw him do, because he believes, especially in pressure situations, it helps to relax your team when you get the lead. And they have a 3-0 lead now in the first inning. Brian Lloyd making a bid to be the MVP of this College World Series. He's hitting 500 through the first three games, including a grand slam here Thursday night against the Tennessee Volunteers. He has two homers in three games and overall for the year, hitting 364. He's a real team leader for them, too. He's an outstanding catcher, throws well, handles the staff well, blocks the ball in the dirt well. And it's a bonus when you have a catcher that can put some numbers up as he has. Second best uh, numbers on their ball club. Lloyd's a sophomore from Fullerton, California, playing for his hometown university. He's 21 years old. Augie Garrido says he will play in the big leagues someday. You know, it's interesting. Both of these catchers for SC and Cal State Fullerton were hurt last year and have come back from injury. And not to make an excuse for Chad Moeller, but he's come off of knee surgery. And for a catcher, that makes it difficult. Fairly well hit the center and helped by the breeze, but Dawkins will play it for the second out. It's a cozy ballpark, and the ball has been flying out of here. 42 home runs now have been hit in this College World Series. That's a record. 332 down the line, 408 to straightaway center, and only 360 to the power alley. And the fence most of the way around is less than seven feet high in straightaway center. It's 10 feet. Would have had to be the green monster from Fenway Park to hold the ball that Totsie hit the straightaway center. Three nothing Fullerton leading in the first. Exactly an opposite start to their game here a week ago on CBS when they fell behind Stanford three to nothing and came back to beat the Cardinals six to five. Joe Frazier is the batter. The junior second baseman from Huntington Beach, California took a fastball. And he's in the hole 0 and 2. Now Cooper is really throwing hard. I don't know what the gun reading is exactly, but uh, from this vantage point, you can you can hear the glove pop, and the ball is really riding through the strike zone. And that fastball missed low and away. One and two. Coach Gillespie tells us Cooper's fastball is generally between 87 and 90 miles per hour. He described it as the sink and run kind of fastball. Went to the breaking ball, and it's lined to left and caught by Jock Jones. Well, the Titans are off to a 3 0 lead on the home run by Mark Kotze. like best about Sprint Sense? Ten cents a minute. Ten cents a minute. I know what I'm getting when I'm calling on the phone. The rates are a flat rate. They're a dime a minute. No wonder over the last few months, so many people have signed up for Sprint Sense. Ten cents a minute every evening and all weekend long. It's as simple as that. One minute, two minutes, three minutes. A dime a minute is a wonderful deal. So even if I go for an hour, it's only going to cost me six dollars. So, what are you paying for a minute of long distance? Call now for ten cents a minute and get up to a hundred minutes free. Announcing a waterproofing breakthrough. Thompson's Water Seal Ultra Waterproofer. Ultra powerful. The best multi-surface waterproofer you can buy. Ultra protective. Thompson's Ultra beats the competition hands down. Thompson's Ultra, the ultimate waterproofer. Athlete sport is a predator. To cure it all, you've got to kill it all. Today, there's Lutherman AF Spray and Powder with full prescription strength medicine that kills all causes of athlete's foot. Lutherman AF, the killer cure. You can't drive by the White House, but these guys will find the most direct route in our nation's capital. The Kemper Open, next on CBS. 
Oklahoma advanced to this College World Series, but the Sooners were not able to defend their national championship one year a year ago. If you look at the last five national champions in college baseball. This is the second all Southern California national championship game and the second all California title game in college World Series history. The other was in 92. As you saw, Pepperdine was the winner. They beat Cal State Fullerton in the championship game to win that national title. The Titans are in the title game for the second time in four years, and they lead three to nothing as the USC Trojans come up in the second with Jeff Jenkins leading off. He's riding a 10-game hitting streak, and for the season now is nearly at 400. He's raised his average up to 398. With a team high 22 homers and 77 runs batted in. Jenkins, Jock Jones, Chad Moeller, the middle third of the order. In the second for USC against Ted Silva. Silva's a junior from Redondo Beach, California. 20 years old, 6'1", just 170 pounds. And as Jeff mentioned, he's made the transition to starting pitching after an effective career as a closer. And he dabbles in closing this year as well, although most of his energy is directed at starting pitching. Sean, I want you to take a look at this, Jenkins. He gets all the energy he's got and strength in every swing. And he's got a kind of a, a lift type swing. And he was drafted by Milwaukee. And uh, they have confidence that even though he's not a great big guy, he's got uh, outstanding power. He shot one foul off his foot. Jenkins has been accused of over swinging. I thought he had an interesting comment about that. He said, when you hit a ball 450 feet, you don't hear anything about over swinging, but when you pop it up, it's, oh, there's that big swing again. <laughs> and you mentioned his size. He's listed at 6'1, 200 pounds, but Coach Gillespie said he's probably closer to 6 feet or 5'11 and about 185 pounds, but he has tremendous lower body strength. Ball low and in. USC has had great players, 35 first-team All-Americans, 70 big leaguers. The Jenkins has more runs batted in than any of them, and he's second behind Mark McGuire all-time at SC, and home run. He pulled that one foul. You know, it's interesting. You talked about lower body. A lot of people don't realize that your legs are really used in hitting as well. And what he reminds me of a little bit is Sadaharu Oh, the great Japanese hitter, had very strong lower body and balanced on those legs and, and was an outstanding hitter. And this kid is really built solidly and has uh, the kind of power, even though he's not large in stature, that major league clubs will drool over. And down the left field line he goes with the first USC hit of the ball game. Miranda over to play it. Jenkins on his way to second with a double. And he's now hit an 11 straight game. Now here's the pitch. The pitch is on the outer half of the plate. And it might not even be a strike. It might be off the outside. It was. And he just stayed with it. And it's what you say. He, he took what they gave him there. And, of course, these kids on these two teams know each other very well. They've probably been playing against one another for years because they're in the same uh, neighborhood, so to speak. And uh, Jenkins normally pulls the ball, and he just shot that ball to left field. Good piece of hitting. And now Jock Jones is at the plate. He's had a productive College World Series, batting 364. Eight hits and 22 at bats, including a home run. He set a USC school record earlier this season with a 28 game hitting streak. They go to the bunt, and it's a good bunt. Olsen to the second baseman who was not on the bag. Frazier fielded the throw. That was a step or two from first base. So Jones is safe. And Jenkins is at third, and now the tying run will come to the plate in the second for USC. This is a difficult play. It was an outstanding bump. What you want your left-hander to do is drag the ball past the pitcher. And if the pitcher finds he cannot get there, get, get to the ball, he'll head for the base. Well, he peeled off because he and the second baseman, Frazier, got there at the same time, and Olsen flipped the ball 
to Frazier, and Frazier pulled up. So they both pulled up, and nobody was at the base. And that's not characteristic of this Cal State Fullerton team to make a mistake like that uh, defensively. The official score is not yet handed down a ruling as Jones reached. And now Chad Moeller is the tying run at the plate with nobody out in the second. Cal State Fullerton leads three to nothing. And Moeller's hitting 350, including a home run last night in the 7-3 win over Miami. Now this is that play again, and that's a beautiful bunt and pass the pitcher. First baseman has to field it. But the first baseman Olsen didn't quite know who to throw that ball to. Normally in that situation, he would probably throw it to the second baseman covering the base. But Silva was over there so quickly, and right at the last minute, both of them peeled off and, and didn't uh, go to the base. D.C. Olsen, the veteran of this Titan team, the first baseman. After the visit from the pitching coach, George Horton, Silva ready to go back to work for Moeller, even the count at one ball and one strike. They've credited Jones with a sacrifice and charged the first baseman with an error. Olsen charged with an error. Apparently the official score felt if you flipped it to Silva, Silva was going to win the race to the base. Rare error charged to Cal State Fullerton, just their seventh in their last 16 games. We know that USC's made 11 in five games here in Omaha. Frazier behind the second base back. Soft line drive that stayed in the air a long time. And Moeller is the first out of the second. That's what you would call a aluminum bat line drive. If that ball had been hit with a wooden bat, that ball was way inside, way in what we call this kitchen. That ball might not have even gone to the dirt. But because it's an aluminum bat and does not break, that ball carried a little bit farther. Now Greg Walbridge, who followed Moeller's home run last night with one of his own. The USC first baseman has hit safely in all five games here at the College World Series. And he looks at ball one, up and away. Walbridge, a sophomore from Long Beach, California. Hitting 450 in this College World Series, having gone nine for 20 with two home runs here including the homer last night against the Canes. Silva would like to get a strikeout here or a double play ball if he can. And he's got a, a candidate in Walbridge who strikes out a little bit. He's young and, and still inexperienced. Swings the bat well. He's a pretty good hitter. But he's got a hole up and in. We'll see where they go here. They go to first to try to keep Jock Jones close. Jenkins is the runner at third and Jones at first with one out in the top of the second Cal State Fullerton leads three to nothing in the national championship game one ball and one strike on Walbridge as Jeff mentioned he strikes out a lot he's fanned a team high 48 times this year will also occasionally hit one out of the ballpark. These two teams met twice during the regular season, each winning on its home field. And Walbridge hit a grand slam in the 7-4 Trojan win over Cal State Fullerton at USC's Dato Field on March 28th. They drove in five of the seven runs in that game. Ball just outside. Two balls and a strike on Walbridge. This is an important inning right now for Silva because normally when your club scores, you'd like to shut the other team down immediately. So he's got to be careful where he's pitching here. Uh, hopefully, with less than, the, less than two outs and a runner at third base, he would love to get a strikeout, ideally. Oh, I guess maybe ideally the double play would get him out of it quicker, but... He'd take either one and be happy about it. I think you're right.
Now the 2-1. Late swing and a foul ball down the left field line. Now, Sean, we just saw that um, fake pickoff at third base where they fake the third and go back to first, and a lot of people say, what a waste of time. That never works. But it does work if it's performed properly. Jack McDowell does it as well as anybody I've ever seen. I think Steve Busby years ago with Kansas City was the first I ever saw use it. But if you really make it a good fake to third, it does work. And you mentioned two pitchers who pitched in the College World Series. Busby, a graduate a product of USC. And McDowell from Stanford. And you told me when you managed McDowell with the White Sox, he worked that move several times. So those of us who refer to it routinely as the move that never works would have to bite our tongue. Yes, that's right. Besides that, there's a, a variation. He throws right to third base from it. And Walbridge strikes out. Big strikeout for the second out of the inning. First strikeout of the afternoon for Ted Silva. This was some outstanding pitching. He'd been feeding him real hard stuff. You can see the spin on the ball. That was a slider that he threw down and in. And Walbridge was, was tuned up to hit the fastball. And you can see this breaking ball went down and in. And he swung over the top of it. That was very good pitching. And Silva now will try to work all the way out of the jam. We had first and third and nobody out. Now it's first and third and two down for Ernie Diaz, the third baseman. And a good stop by Lloyd on the pitch well outside and low. Sean, you just made a good point. That was a real good stop because Lloyd's thinking this situation, the runner at third base, he's looking, he knows what he's called, so he knows where he has to get to block the ball in case it goes in the dirt. And he was ready to roll. And that is so important. That's a, a value that the catcher has that a lot of people underestimate. We saw that Diaz only has three hits in the College World Series, but two of them have been home runs. And Coach Gillespie told us he has deceptive power for a player of his size, just 5'9", and that's probably stretching it a bit, 165 pounds. The junior from Montrose, California, and there's a deep drive to left, right on cue. Ernie Diaz with a three-run homer. And the Trojans pull even with the Titans and Ted Silva. It's three to three. I was just about to say before he hit that ball that one of the things you really have to be careful of in a situation like that is you got the two big outs, you cannot relax. And I'm not saying he relaxed, but he hung a ball right in the middle of the plate here. And here it comes. You can see it just spinning in the middle of the plate. It was a breaking ball, and Diaz did not miss it. That's the danger of a slider at times because if a guy's throwing real hard and a hitter is really keyed up to get to the fastball and he throws a slider, it's a little slower. And if it just spins in the middle of the plate, what you've done is speed the hitter's bat up. This championship game is starting in keeping with the theme of this College World Series. Offense has been the story throughout. And CBS Sports coverage of the 1995 College World Series will continue after this message and a word to your local station. In the middle of my work day, I don't do power lunches. I do power lifts. And when you work out this hard, you better use a deodorant that works hard, too. That's why I use Speed Stick. It gives me 110% protection that lasts all day. And fortunately, all night. Because while I may not have time for lunches, I always manage to find some time for dinner. Speed Stick, like you, it never quits. And try new Speed Stick Clear for clear protection that never quits. Five minutes. This is CBS. the minivan headquarters all make and all models of minivans look at this here's a beautiful 92 ford aerostar 99.95 and look here's a 93 plymouth voyager 99.95 here's a brand new 95 ford windstar 18.995 here's a brand new 95 ford taurus 
$14,995, and a brand new 95 Ford Contour, $13,995. Worthington Ford, come down the San Diego Freeway to Bellflower Boulevard. Action News, Emmy Award winner for LA's best half-hour newscast. A three-run homer by Ernie Diaz has tied this game at three, and it brought a smile to the face of one of the greatest coaches in college baseball history, Rod Dado. He's downstairs with Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? You said it, Sean. 11 championships in 44 years, and uh, but you said you started when you were 10 years 10 old, years right? Old, yes. <laughs> 10 years old. But actually, you know, the, the national championships didn't start quite back then. It really just started in 1947. Did you have any words of advice for Mike Gillespie and his team today? Yes, indeed. We said we came here to, to win. It's like Mark Anthony said to Cleopatra, I didn't come here to pay. So we, I, when I, we, I had to go home, came back again, and I said I did not come just to see one game. It was two games. Well, you got your second game. Uh, what do you like about this SC team? Well, they they're, uh, they're, they're really have been a cohesive bunch, and they're getting that Trojan spirit that we talk about so much that you know something about. And I think this team has got that. There's a real charisma there. And just like just now, Mike Gillespie showed me a, a cable he got from uh, Steve Busby. It said, Trojans never get beat, Steve Busby. And Steve pitched for me uh, when we won this some while back. But that's the kind of spirit we've always had. And this team is getting that now. And your legacy lives strong at SC. You're still involved. Thanks so much for your time, sir. Well, thank you, Michelle. And nice to see you. Sean? And Coach won't be as happy as he was moments ago as D.C. Olsen leads off the second with a bounding ball single through the left side. That's the third hit for Cal State Fullerton. You'd have to say, Jeff, he's the greatest college baseball coach of all time. Rod Dato has mentioned far more national championships for USC than any other school. Arizona State is second all-time with five national titles. They won their first title in 1948. The most recent in 1978, they won five in a row, 70 through 74. Players like Dave Kingman, Steve Busby, Fred Lynn, Roy Smalley, Rich Dower, Steve Kemp. More wins in the College World Series than any other program. Texas number two all time with 64. And what a delightful guy Rod Dato is. The field is named for him at USC. He's now 80 years old. Say he's the greatest ambassador of college baseball as you could possibly have. You know, he's an outstanding coach and, and uh, has been involved in all aspects of the game, international play. And uh, when I was playing with the Dodgers and the Angels out in the West Coast, I would see Rod all the time. He, he just loves the game and uh, just so happy to talk about it. And he was funny last night when he was on the ESPN telecast of the Trojans win over Miami. He was asked what the director of baseball emeritus at USC does. He says, I really don't do anything. I just get into the games for free. <laughs> Jack Jones, the batter. In the bottom of the second, Steve Augie Garrido goes back to the bunt, as is his custom, and he does. And it's a good fun. All these guys run well, and it turns into a bonus as the fielding problems for USC continue. Walbridge commits the 12th Trojan error in this their sixth game here in Omaha. Well, here's another very good bunt. Walbridge feels the bunt. He gets a little excited. He comes up real quick, and the ball's in his glove, and it kind of flips out. He comes up so quickly, kind of took his eye off the ball after he had it in the glove. But you have to stay with the ball and stay together and almost reach in with your bare hand and make sure you're ready to play it. But, boy, when you put the ball on the ground, anything can happen. You can see he looked away from where he was going to feel the ball and looked at the runner. And the ball flipped out of his glove. All three times that these two teams here in the first two innings have tried to bunt a runner along, the man laying down the bunt has reached. And the first two times, the bunter scored on a three-run homer. Now Martinez drops down a bunt. Cooper goes to first, makes the sure out. He might have had a play at third on D.C. Olsen, who doesn't run particularly well. And finally, a bunter is thrown out. It's a sacrifice for Martinez, and now second and third for the Titans with a one out in the second in a 3-3 game. You called that right on the money, though. You've got to make sure of one here. Here's another very good bunch. You can see that this team plays very good. This is Cal State Fullerton, very good inside baseball. When we were talking to their players earlier, they said that everybody in the lineup has to be able to bunt and do the little things to win, and that's how they play. Now they have two runners in scoring position as a result of two bunts. And the top of the order. 
Tony Miranda hits a ground ball to short. Alvarez throws him out, but the run scores. Olsen's in from third, and the Titans are quickly back on top at four to three. Now, as a result of those bunts, the SC infield had to play back with runners at second, third. They don't want to give up a big inning. So all that Cal State Fullerton was thinking about at that time, if they're going to give me a ground ball run, I'll try to hit the ball on the ground. And that's what they did, and they got the run. C.J. Ankrum, the freshman D.H., Saratoga, California. Tried to lay down a sacrifice bunt and reached when the catcher Mulder threw it in the center field. He scored on the three run homer by Mark Kotze in the bottom of the first. Ernie Diaz had a three run homer for USC near the top of the second, but now Cal State Fullerton has pushed the run across to reclaim the lead. Christian John Ankrum, the hitter, and Cooper could have helped himself but couldn't field it. Former junior college shortstop did not get the glove on the comebacker from Ankrum, who has a base hit in an RBI, and the Titans lead by two. Now here's the pitch, which is a good downer breaking ball. It's hit right back through the middle, and Brian Cooper kind of fell off to the left side of the mound, and the ball went back to his right just a little bit. It's uh, really easy to sit up here and criticize that when you're only 60 foot 6 inches away from home plate, and that ball comes back pretty quickly. But there were your bunts. There was what happens when you give extra outs in an inning. And they move runners around, and they just manufacture two runs. I mentioned this has been a record-setting College World Series in terms of offense. Mark Kotze, the batter, he had a three-run homer in the first. In the CWS, 72 of the 163 runs that have been scored have scored in the first two innings. Forty-four percent of all the scoring in this World Series has come in the first two innings. Ponce drives one a deep right, and he has his second home run in as many innings. A three-run homer in the first, a two-run homer here in the second, and Augie Garrido's Titans take a 7-3 lead. Wow, he makes it look easy. He goes up there like he's playing in his backyard, just hitting the ball out of the ballpark. Here's the pitch from Cooper. Kotze kept it. Watch how he keeps his head down on the ball. And he gets the head of the bat out. Wham! He gets the lower half open. Let's the head of the bat do the work, and there's the second home run of the day. 21 homers this year for Kotze, the sophomore from Santa Fe Springs, California. Driven in five of the seven runs and two innings. All four runs this inning unearned as a result of the error by the first baseman. And the Titans have their largest lead. Seven to three the score. Jeremy Giambi, seventh batter of the inning. He made the first out of the first inning with a fly ball to center. Kotze, the co-national player of the year, selected by Collegiate Baseball Magazine with Tennessee's Todd Helton, who performed in this College World Series. Giambi down the left field line. And he'll stop at first with a two-out single. He'll be doing damage to Brian Cooper. Some of it not of his own doing, but there is action for the first time today in the USC bullpen. Here's another real good piece of hitting. The ball is not a strike. It's on the outside part of the plate, and he just shoots the ball the other way. Now, that is really good hitting. That ball might have been four or five inches outside. Now, that is real selective hitting. I, I, I'll tell you, this Cal State Fullerton team is really a very um, selective team hitting-wise, but they're relentless. They just keep coming at you and put real tough at-bats on you. For the season, they're hitting 336 entering today. Loy tries to surprise Bunt, and Diaz got him on a close play at third. Loy was stumbling over the bag, but he gets up quickly. Four runs in the second for Cal State Fullerton. They lead by four. 
This summer, Napa's keeping America running at about 200 miles per hour with the Road to the Championship sale. You could win an incredible trip to the Napa 500 in November, as well as Napa racing jackets and more. Also pick up Napa Silver Oil Filters from just $1.99 and selected Evercraft tool sets, your choice only $9.99. But hurry, these days everything's going fast at Napa. We keep America This is a commercial for cheese. Time for a snack. There's some cheese in the fridge. Throw some cheese on your fruits and muffins. They'll taste terrific. Hmm, looks good. May I? Cheese snacks and new attitude with cheese. How much closer are our precision heads? Our innovative lift and cut system? How much better is the latest Norelco? In a word, we've never brought you closer. The Norelco Razor, our closest shave ever. Seven three for Cal State Fullerton after two innings, powered by Mark Kotze, who had a three-run homer in the first, with nobody out. His 20th of the year, a mammoth towering drive over everything, including the backdrop, just to the right field side of center, and then in the second, with a man aboard, a line drive homer, five or six throws back into the right field bleachers. Two home runs in two innings with the two homers. Mark has tied the College World Series championship game for home runs in a game. The only other player in championship game history to hit two. Bill Horning of Minnesota against Arizona. June 14th of 1956. Horning hit two in a 12-1 Minnesota win. Both have won it all. Not the way the Trojans have been swinging the bats. In this World World Series, the four run deficit isn't all that intimidating. At the top of the order up against Ted Silva in the third, Walter Dawkins started the ball game with a ground ball to third base. Paul Cruz gave Alvarez able to follow. Dawkins to right and pretty well hit. Giambi running out of room. This ball is flying out of here today. Dawkins with the home run. His ninth of the season. And it's seven to four. Four home runs already in this game. And we're only in the top of the third with nobody out. Sean, it looks like these guys are using golf clubs the way these balls are going out of here. Now, normally Dawkins is a pull hitter. He just got the head of the bat out on the ball in the outer part of the plate and just drove it right on out of the ballpark to right field. I know there's some strength here, but um, and I know the wind's blowing out to right field, but aluminum bats seem to drive the ball. Yes, they do. 45 homers in this College World Series. The record-setting total continues to grow as these two teams have combined for four already. Paul Cruz out on the fly ball to center. He's 0 for 2 today and is the first out of the third with the home run by Dawkins eight different USC players have hit a home run in this college world series Trojans have set the team record with 13 Gabe Alvarez he had five hits last night bounced the third in his first at bat today that tied the record for hits in a College World Series game. The ninth time it's been done, most recently by some fellow. We've got to research what has happened to this player. Barry Bonds at Arizona State had five in a game in 84. I wonder what he's doing now. Well, the last I saw him, he was doing the same thing, and I was managing against him. 2-0, <laughs> the count on Alvarez. And Silva visited at the mound by his battery mate, 
Brian Lloyd. Ted pitched the first nine inning no hitter in the 31 year history of Cal State Fullerton baseball this season. April 23rd against Pacific. Got a perfect game, two outs into the eighth inning, and he issued a walk. Completed the no hitter with just the one walk and 11 strikeouts. One of his 17 wins this year. In the air and right center and up into the breeze, but Kase has room just in front of the wall. That looked like a routine fly ball when it left the bat and it made it to the middle of the warning track. Five, the teams two, this afternoon just picking up where they've left off in this College World Series offensively. They have each averaged more than nine runs per game. And you'll get to the championship game when you hit as they have hit. In the case of USC in particular, their hitting has covered up a lot of pitching and defensive mistakes. They've needed all of them. They really have. They just you just can't live with part of the game. I mean, you can get away with it for a while, but you can't just live without a solid defense. Oh. Now Jeff Jenkins. Who Jeff mentioned was the first round pick of the Brewers last week. Milwaukee used the ninth pick in the entire draft to select Jenkins. He's a first team All-American this season. And he drives one to deep right. That ball is going to be way out of here. Over everything. <laughs> well, they're using golf clubs. <laughs> that one was the driver. He didn't leave anything in the bag with that swing. And all of a sudden, it's seven to five. Holy mackerel, what is it, home run derby? Here comes the pitch from Silva right here. And it's a fastball, two-seam fastball. Boy, and Jenkins really gets it. He's got an uppercut swing, and that ball is up. And he hit that ball a ton. That went way over the bleacher, way down the back where they parked the buses. Jenkins with his 23rd home run of the season. The second hit he doubled and scored last inning. Four hits now for the Trojans. All of them extra base hits surrendered by Silva. The double by Jenkins and then three homers by Diaz, Dawkins, and Jenkins. It's seven to five with two outs in the top of the third. And that being the fifth home run of the ball game. These two teams have combined to set a championship game record for home runs between the two teams. The previous record was four set last year when Oklahoma hit two, Georgia Tech hit two, and the Sooners championship game win over Georgia Tech. So already a record for home runs in the championship game and it's in the top of the third. One and one on Jock Jones. Sacrifice reached on an error and scored on the Diaz homer last inning. John Ward, a right-hander, has started throwing in the Cal State Fullerton bullpen. Check swing, no swing, says third base umpire Bob Hamolka. a high fastball and well it was a good call the head of the bat he held the head of the bat back but the catcher young Brian Lloyd asked the wrong umpire for the call <laughs> he, he cast down the first baseline rather than the third base and if you take a while they will not call it bounce back to the mound Silva snared it and that ends the inning with two more homers solo shots by Dawkins and Jenkins and it's a two run game as we head to the bottom of the third percent cotton wrinkle-free dockers. Pants so soft, they shrug off wrinkles. 
today in local sports, the poor Sheffield Tigers lost 42-3 to to the Wakeman Lions, and they're taking it pretty hard. They may never recover from this one, folks. Davy Johnson couldn't connect all day, little Bobby Emerson couldn't find the plate, and even Big John Burke couldn't score. At today's Pizza Hut, your pizza's right or it's free, guaranteed. With 43 games left, Team Spirit's at an all-time low. Pizza Hut, year after year, America's favorite pizza place. We know a way to raise your bottom line that can cut inventory investment, get better asset turn, free working capital, while speeding cycle time for improved customer service. It can even help you with global expansion. It's called Integrated Logistics from Ryder. Nothing improves your bottom line like Ryder know-how. Five home runs already. Cal State Fullerton comes to bat in the third, leading by two. Let's join Michelle Tafoya. Thanks, Sean. I'm standing by with NCAA Executive Director Cedric Dempsey, and this has been quite a series, and just today has been sort of a representation of that. Five home runs already. Are you getting more than you expected? Well, if you like offensive baseball, Michelle, this is it. Uh, this reminds me when I used to be at Arizona, we used to call this uh, Sunday afternoon in the Pac-6 because uh, uh, they, both clubs have uh, great offensive power, and, uh, and I'm sure this is going to be a double-digit game before it's over with. The series has grown so much. Talk a little bit about the growth and how, how big you expect it to get. Well, it, uh, as we can add more seats, I think it'll get larger. I think the uh, city of Omaha has done a tremendous job with the, with the promotion of, uh, of this event. And as the people told me here this week, it's the greatest event in Nebraska, including Nebraska football. So that's, that's saying a lot, uh, considering how uh, much they love their big red here in, in Omaha. But uh, we've seen uh, just tremendous growth with it, another record-breaking attendance this year. But we're seeing that with all of our championships, Michelle. It's really exciting. I was just in College Park two weeks ago with uh, lacrosse, and we had uh, 56,000 people turn out for the Division I lacrosse championship for the finals and semifinal games. So I think it's an indication of the, of the great interest in college sports. And uh, actually, this series has outgrown many of the professional uh, games this past week. Enjoy Sunday afternoon baseball on Saturday. <laughs> That's true. Thank you, sir. Sean? Thank you, Michelle, and while Michelle was chatting with Ted Dempsey, we saw a terrific catch of the line drive hit by Joe Frazier, caught by Wes Rachels for the first out of the third. Now D.C. Olson's the bat. Rachels has had a terrific series, particularly at the plate, and that time he flashed the glove. Ted Dempsey talked about the attendance. They will set every attendance record in this College World Series, both for average attendance per session and for the largest crowd with the addition of seats, particularly those out in right field, the bleachers over which the ball by Jenkins went. They have a larger capacity here at Rosenblatt than they've ever had before. Jones the catch. The fly ball by Olsen and quickly two down to Brian Cooper in the third. He could use a one, two, three inning. Tough to imagine where they might add more seats. We heard said mentioned as they add more seats, they'll increase the capacity and set more records, but they have put seats just about everywhere you can imagine here now. Yeah, they might have to start double decking it mm -hmm. all the way around. This is a nice setting. Indeed it is. Jack Jones sacrificed, reached on an error, and scored. Last inning, he drives that to deep left center. Dawkins makes the running catch of the warning track. It wasn't exactly a whole hum one, two, three inning, but the Titans did go in order in the third. CBS Sports coverage of the 1995 College World Series will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Lots of snacks are just the same old taste, bite after bite. Come on, break loose with Fisher Nuts and Fruits. There's creamy cashews, sweet papaya, crunchy almonds. So every handful's different. And Fisher Nuts and Crunches with crispy peanuts, tortilla twists, and crunchy pretzels. Shake out another handful and shake up your taste buds all over again. Fisher Snack Mixes. The best bite is always the next bite. This is CBS. These days, you need an answering machine for taking messages. A pager so people can reach you. 
business cell your phone so you can make calls anytime. Now, AirTouch combines them all into the new AirTouch message phone. And now it's only $59. It's the cellular phone that lets you decide how to stay in touch. And it's only from AirTouch. Hi, got your message. What's up? To get your new AirTouch message phone, call 1-800-AIRTOUCH. It shipped coal to preserve the clean taste of the Rockies. That's the Rockies! It's your sneak peek at Michael Jackson's comeback album on hard copy. Seven to five in favor of the number one team in the country, Cal State Fullerton, here in breezy Omaha. As we head to the fourth inning, Sean McDonough with Jeff Torborg. We talked about all the improvements in this ballpark, and you can see that uh, we do not exactly have spacious, glamorous accommodations that top the screen, but next year, there'll be a brand new $3 million press box here, and then it will be impossible to find any flaw in Rosenblatt Stadium. This is a terrific facility, not only the home of the World Series, but also the home of the Omaha Royals, Kansas City's AAA team. First pitch of the fourth, sliced out of play to the right by Chad Moeller, the USC catcher. Moeller, Walbridge, and Diaz coming up against Ted Silva. Moeller's a sophomore from Upland, California. The entire Cal State Fullerton roster is comprised of players from California. And among the 25-man World Series roster for USC, all but two of the Trojans are from California. Big swing and a miss by Moeller. Jeff mentioned is bouncing back from injuries. Not only the reconstructive knee surgery that he had last April, but he came to USC as a highly recruited player in his first fall baseball season, broke his left hand. He missed fall practice, then he came back in the spring last April went out for the year with reconstructed knee surgery got only 55 at bats then he missed the entire summer and he would have played in the Cape Cod League recovering from the knee surgery and he came back this January and they threw him right in there and said you're the catcher got up to a very tough start but really picked it up and coach Gillespie says he's a big reason why they've had much more success over the second half of the year no swing says Dale Williams at first. I can re really relate to a, a catcher who's having problems with a knee, and here's the replay, and they say he didn't swing. Now, that was a close one. I'd say he swung. Yeah, I never write on those in the naked eye, but in the replay, I've got all the answers. That's the way it always <laughs> was in the dugout as well, but uh, it's really tough to catch and have a bad knee. Well, you can hit with it, and he lines one that's caught by Kotze. Terrific catch by Kotze with the ball slicing away from him. Lucky Guido says he doesn't have blazing speed, but he gets a great jump on every ball. And he says Kotze reminds him of a young Fred Lynn. That's a tremendous compliment. Well, I'll say. You know, every ball that's been hit has been a bullet. I mean, if it doesn't carry all the way to the warning track, it's a line drive that didn't quite get that far. But these balls are rocking around, rocketing around this ballpark. Cooper just worked a 1-2-3 inning for USC. Now Silva is trying to have one. He had an easy first, but the Trojans have knocked him around in the last two innings. Walbridge struck out in the second. Cal State Fullerton leads 7-5 in the top of the fourth. And not exactly a perfect day you get the ice cream at the concession stand with the 59 degrees at game time. But ice cream is never a bad call, actually. I have to agree with that. <laughs> we've proven that, actually, <laughs> in the two weeks we've been here. In right field, the catch made by Giambi. Two down. Coming up following the ball game, CBS Sports takes you to Potomac, Maryland for live third-round coverage 
of the Kemper Open, where Davis Love the third has the lead after two rounds by two shots over Scott Hoke. It's the Kemper Open next on CBS Sports. Bernie Diaz has got the Trojans on the board. With his three-run homer in the second. And he looked at strike one. He's in his first year at USC as a transfer from Los Angeles City College. Well, he wasn't expected to be a big part of the team this year. They had Derek Brown, a highly recruited freshman, as the starting third baseman when the year began. But Brown suffered a badly sprained ankle. He's been out of action for several weeks. Diaz took over and has been a pleasant surprise. Ernie has been trying to find some playing time at second base as a DH, as a pinch hitter. Bounced around, but now he's the starting third baseman. Derek Baker, they think, has a bright future. He might be available to pinch hit today. He has seen some pinch hitting duty lately, but he really hasn't been able to play in Baker's absence. It's been a blow, but not a big one because Diaz has played so well. One, two, three inning, and Silva has his second strikeout. Shaving can strip away your skin's moisture, leaving it dry, burning. But now you can take the heat out of shaving with new Old Spice Soothing Gel, an amazing two-in-one gel that combines aftershave and moisturizer into one soothing formula. Try it. If you don't think this makes your face feel great, Call 1-800-PROVE-IT for a full refund. Prove it to yourself. Try new soothing gel. Takes the heat out of shaving. <laughs> and now you've got proof. Guaranteed. Popping with flavor more flavor than ever. This fast too. It's the right thing to do. Popping with flavor. Pringles right with flavor. Stand new. Onion. Now more flavor on the chin. Left back and left squeeze across the lid. Popping with flavor. Mangoes, bright crisp flavor. Once you pop, you can't stop. American families have made their choice. Once again, they've chosen the Buick LeSabre as Family Circle Magazine's Family Car of the Year. For reasons like safety, dependability, performance, and style. American families chose Le Sabre as family car of the year over every other sedan, foreign or domestic. Buick Le Sabre, the American family, family car. Augie Garrido coaching this World Series from an electric cart. He ruptured his Achilles tendon on his right leg on May 3rd playing Pepper with some of his players before a game at Cal State Northridge, but that won't be his most vivid memory of this season. We asked him what he'll take away from the 1995 Titans. The most amazing thing that this has happened here is what I've learned from the players and uh, and what in the process of watching them when there's no expectation level for the players and they and young people are able to exercise on their own talent, their own knowledge, their own ability. Uh, what can be accomplished, and uh, I think they've given me a new definition of teamwork. I thought it was interesting when we have chatted with Augie these two weeks. He admits that he's very philosophical by nature. He says there's a fine line between what I say and what I believe in and baloney, to use a nice word. But uh, his players believe in it, and he believes in it. And when you see this team in action, you know that it's more than a cliche. So much of what they are accomplishing has been accomplished because of their teamwork and terrific chemistry. Well, I believe in that. You talk about attitude and chemistry. Uh, you don't realize how important chemistry is, so you don't have it. But uh, his kids, they just, they believe so much, and they, they no one expected them to be here this year. This is supposed to be a building year for them. Oh! He was asked about that after the win the other night that got them into the championship game. He said, how do you explain this was supposed to be a rebuilding year, and here you are in the national championship? He said, we rebuild fast. <laughs> but he admitted that three weeks into this season he got very angry at his assistant coaches to do the recruiting for handing him a team that wasn't very good in his opinion 
Martinez out on the ground ball to short. The throw from Alvarez was high, but Walbridge came down with it. Of course, Augie uh, has changed his attitude about the abilities of this group of Titans. This was a real nice play. Alvarez stayed with that ball. That ball came up, and then he threw it high. And Walbridge made a nice play standing with the ball and then being able to come down on the base. That was a real nice play on both ends of that. Well, the pitchers seem to be settling down now. Hooper has retired five in a row as he faces the top of the order for the third time in four innings. Miranda singled and scored in the first, grounded out and drove in a run in the second. Ball one outside on Tony Miranda. I wonder if it's the pitcher settling down or the hitters getting tired. <laughs> Man, I see some rockets. Ball two, two and all. Oh. Ryan Cooper, sociology major at USC. Fourth round pick of the California Angels last week. He was the first player selected in the fourth round. Last year at junior college, he was drafted in the 39th round by Philadelphia, but chose not to sign. Ryan spent two years at Citrus College, junior college in Glendora, California. And he has delivered ball four to Miranda. Well, he's aboard with one out in the fourth. Cal State Fullerton leads seven to five. The first walk issued by either pitcher. Not the only thing we haven't had prior to now. <laughs> now, C.J. Ankrum. In his freshman season, he has set a school record. One that most players probably do not want to set. C.J. He's been hit by a pitch 17 times this year, a school record. And he fouls one away to the left. That's taken 17 for the club, right? Yeah. Wow. Maybe that's how he stays in the lineup as a freshman. Well, you talked about teamwork. When you take 17 that's for right. the team, you are a team guy. Boy, when you talk about all the players from California and these two teams and here in the College World Series, uh, both teams, it makes you realize the wealth of talent in California. Baseball talent. Mentioned these two schools only 40 miles apart. That's the closest proximity of the two teams who have met in the national championship game. They tell us that in 92 when Pepperdine played Cal State Forward and those two schools are about 60 miles apart. And these players all have played against or with each other growing up or in college. They've met two times this year as we noted. Ankrum is on base for the third time. He has his second hit. And the Titans are trying to put something together with one out here in the fourth as they look to build on a 7-5 lead. They now have seven hits. And here comes Kotze, who has already homered twice and driven in five runs in two at-bats today. He had a three-run homer to center field in the first, a two-run shot into the right field bleachers in the second, and now he's up with two men on. Earlier in this College World Series, J.D. Drew of Florida State became the first player in CWS history to hit three home runs in a game. And Kotze has a chance to match that today. He's already tied the championship game record with two. And Kotze's not going to have another chance to bat against Cooper. Seth Etherton is going to come in from the USC bullpen. With the score, seven to five in favor of Cal State Fullerton. We'll return to Omaha in a moment. like best about Sprint Sense? 10 cents a minute. 10 cents a minute. I know what I'm getting when I'm calling on the phone. The rates are a flat rate. They're a dime a minute. It's no wonder over the last few months so many people have signed up for Sprint Sense. 10 cents a minute every evening and all weekend long. It's as simple as that. One minute, two minutes, three minutes. A dime a minute is a wonderful deal. So even if I go for an hour, it's only going to cost me $6. So what are you paying for a minute of long distance? Call now for 10 cents a minute and get up to 100 minutes free. No trendy health club. No $60 shorts. No bull. Speed stick. It's no nonsense formula. Never quits. 
It works and works. Speed Stick for 110% protection. Like you, it never quits. And try new Speed Stick Clear for a clear protection that never quits. Bye, men. National Car Rental gives you what other car rental companies don't. A choice. Mid-size row. Choose your car right on the lot from the car class you've reserved. Check out the make, the model, the color. It's that easy. Because at National, we not only keep you moving, we keep you moving in the car you choose. I took the red one. It's you. Ain't nothing gonna break on my side. The show heads to the beach for a summertime bash. The Women's Pro Beach Volleyball Tour, live Sunday on the CBS Sports Show. Welcome back to the College World Series, the national championship game. Cal State Fullerton at bat in the fourth inning, leading 7-5. to five. And Seth Etherton is the new pitcher. He's 2-4 and four overall in 12 games this season. Seven of them were starts. And he's given up 41 hits in 38 innings. And more walks than strikeouts. 26 walks, 25 Ks. He has the unenviable task of coming in. So the runners at first and second to face Mark Kotze, who is now among the all-time leaders in batting average in College World Series history. He's at 643 with his two for two today, this year, at the College World Series. Only Jim Morris of Notre Dame. In 1957, has posted a higher batting average. We should point out that's not the same Jim Morris as the coach at Miami now. Miranda at second, Ankrum at first. Kotze is homered twice and knocked in five runs. He did that in the first two innings. He took ball one that bounced in front of the plate. Well, he's not going to hit that one out of the ballpark. No. Now, I was wondering, you know, first of all, bringing a freshman into a situation in the College World Series is tough enough. Bring him in against the guy that's already hit two home runs and driven in five runs. His first two at bats, but they say that Etherton is really starting to come around. His arm strength is coming. He's got a better than average fastball. His numbers were not good this year, but he's got a good live arm. And Kotze sliced one foul. Kotze has already tied the record for most runs batted in in the championship game, and the College World Series record for runs batted in in any game is seven. Shared by three players, including Kotze, who had seven runs batted in the game here last year. Now, I wonder what uh, Mike Gillespie said to this young man when he brought him in. <laughs> now, he's got a good curveball and a changeup. You wonder if you told him what to throw in this situation. I know he calls it the pitches from the dugout, but it'd be interesting what he said, to hear what he said. I try to convince him that's not the same Mark Kotze at the plate who was batting early. <laughs> <laughs> it's a guy with the same name, but it's not the same guy. Hey, all you can say to the kid is, now the percentages are working in your favor. <laughs> uh, one thing not working in Etherton's favor is the memory of a three-run homer caught they hit off Etherton in a regular season game this year. <laughs> <laughs> Etherton, 6'1", 190 pounds. As Jeff mentioned, he's a freshman. From Laguna Niguel, California. Beautiful town in Southern California. Just missed with that pitch on the outside part of the plate. Tried to freeze him out away from him. Mike Gillespie is a rested pitcher on the mound. Ethicans only appeared once in this College World Series, and that was in the first game for the Trojans against Miami eight days ago. He struck him out with the high hard one. He did, Sean. They got him at 88 on the gun, but that looked even harder than that. And if you get the ball up above the letters and the hitter can't lay off the ball, you can't get on top of that. This ball just exploded up in the strike zone. He threw this real hard. Now, Katsi is such a good hitter, but I don't care how good you are on a good high fastball. It's really tough. He, you can see that on that last swing that he was underneath the ball. Yes, he is human after all. Mm. Jeremy Giambi took a strike on the inside third. Jeremy flied to center field in the first, single to center in the second. He's batting with two men on and two out in the fourth. Cal State Fullerton has a 7 to 5 lead. Miranda is second, Ankrum at first. 
Nicholson came to USC after a stellar career at Dana Hills High School in California. He was a USA Today second team all USA selection in high school last year. He went nine and one at Dana Hill with an ERA of just over one. Well, he just threw his first off speed pitch. That was a change, a straight change. It was up in the zone. He better not get it up there again. Down the left field line and slicing foul. Not by much. Just a few feet as it landed in the bullpen. This would be a big lift right here if he could get out of this inning. Because they were in the heart of the order with the two runners on and only one out. Have to bring a young freshman in. If he gets out of out of this situation, that could be a real boost. This game is a game. Baseball is a game of of uh, peaks and valleys and emotional roller coaster. And uh, some of the you know a great play can turn the thing around, or or a pitcher coming in and shutting the other club down when it looks like they're on a roll, and that's what could happen here. Etherton just 18 years old and he missed to Giambi evening the count at two and two. Seth is the cousin of former big league pitcher knuckleballer Charlie Huff. Hmm. The runners going to two two Giambi lifts it to left center. Atherton does a nice job. Dawkins made the catch to get him out of the inning. Still 7 of 5 for the Titans after 4. New from Thompson. Thompson's Wood Protector Deck Finish with natural golden toners to renew lost color and powerful three way protection from water, sun, and mildew damage. Thompson's Wood Protector Deck Finish. Lasting beauty and protection all in one. To put together the best Father's Day, start with Craftsman Tools. This Craftsman 61-piece mechanics tool set with case, or this three-drawer rally box, your choice, just $49.99. Craftsman, only at Sears and Sears Hardware Stores. As we, the class of 95, rise to the challenge of a new day, our achievements will not be tainted by the smell of corruption. We will find bold new solutions that will not only ensure a clean start, but will also, ever so softly, serve notice that we are not a generation of slackers. We are the future, and we've come for what's ours. How much do you pay for a minute of long distance to Europe? It probably costs me more than a dollar a minute. It's very expensive. The dollar, maybe more. Introducing Sprint Sense International. Simply great rates to anywhere in the U.S., and now to anywhere in the world. You can save on both, international and domestic. 50 cents la minute pour la France. Le dos finish. Wow. This is one calling plan that sounds good in any language. Call now for Sprint Sense International and get up to 100 minutes free. After a tremendous start, the bats have quieted down a bit as we head to the fifth. Still 7-5 to five for the Titans. And let's rejoin Michelle Tafoya. All right, Sean. A lot of things that are very unique to the College World Series, and this is one of them. Since 1987, this little mobile post office has been the place and the only place you can get a College World Series postmark. They've been postmarking postcards and uh, envelopes. They think they've sold over 3,000 of the postcards alone. So I got into the act, and mine are going in the mail today, Sean. All right. We'll look forward to receiving them. Those are collector's items. Rachel will lead off as we go to the fifth. The Trojans have Rachel's in the top of the order. Dawkins and Cruz coming up against Ted Silva. Rachel's, as we mentioned, has had a terrific College World Series offensively. He lined the center in the second. He's hit safely in all five games, and he's had 23 plate appearances here in Omaha and has reached base safely 15 times. On base percentage of 652. This is a guy who was in a three-way battle to be the starting second baseman for much of the year with Ernie Diaz and Ryan Strom's board. And they 
Mitchell finally got a chance for more than a couple of days at a time. He took advantage of it, particularly here at the World Series. Invariably, you see that in the regionals or World Series. Somebody steps up who hasn't been a star all year long. Monty Garrido told us he thinks that's the key to winning it. You have to have that unexpected hero emerge. <laughs> Among Rachel's successes in this World Series, his first home run of his USC career. We should know we've been asked not to refer to them as Southern Cal, as they are frequently referred to around the country. The athletics department at USC is trying to get all of us away from that. We'd like to be known as Southern California or USC or SC, but not Southern Cal. So around the country, don't call them Southern Cal anymore. And Rachel's is out. First out for Southern Cal. And no, we can't. Here in the fifth, <laughs> Jack Jones threw him out. Like any of us, you like to be called what you like to be called. That's right. That's right. Walter Dawkins, the batter. He's bounced the third and hit a solo homer. Walter was born in Panama City, Panama. Came to this country when he was 10 years old. Speaks fluent fluent Spanish as you might expect better than my English in that last sentence <laughs> <laughs> didn't start playing baseball till he was 12 years old and he's up there with a count of one and one one out base is empty top of the fifth seven to five Cal State Fullerton And 17 and one. I bet he's won that same hat for all 17 victories this year. It looks like it, doesn't it? Right? It's got some mileage on it, doesn't it? I'll tell you, baseball people are more superstitious than anybody I've ever met, and I lead the way. I, oh boy, when we got on winning streaks, I almost died wearing a rubber jacket one time. We started out the streak in cold weather, finished up in about 95 degree weather at Fenway Park, and I had to stand next to the water fountain because I kept having a radiator overheat. My glasses were fogging up, <laughs> but we were winning. I couldn't take that jacket off. He jammed him, and Dawkins dribbled one foul. We're seeing a little bit with Ted Silva what we saw a week ago when we broadcast when he pitched against um, Stanford in that early in the game he got banged around a little bit and he went to the breaking ball and started moving the ball around and kept it down in the zone. That's what he's been doing lately. Chopped down to third. Tony Martinez throws Dawkins out. Two down in the fifth and that is six in a row retired by Silva since the mammoth home run by Jenkins. Tomorrow the CBS Sports Show takes you to Hermosa Beach, California for women's pro beach volleyball. The 1995 Killer Loop U.S. Open comes your way tomorrow at 2 Eastern time on the show. Paul Cruz, the batter. The junior D.H. 0 for 2 as fly to left and to center. Paul's in his first year at USC. He's a junior college transfer from Glendale. Community College in Arizona, where he pitched and played in the outfield. Pretty well hit the center. Katze makes the catch. Another one, two, three, and for Silva. CBS Sports coverage of the 1995 College World Series will continue after this message and a word from your local station. No trendy health club. No $60 shorts. No bull. Speed Stick's no-nonsense formula gives you 110% protection. Like you, it never quits. Five minutes. Head and Shoulders is now. New Head and Shoulders. With Micro D. Better on the outside. Better on the inside. This is CBS. 
Hey, sports fans, don't miss this week's Beat the Pro competition. It's a chance for you amateur golfers to try and beat the tee shot of a local sports celebrity. Win great prizes and raise money for charity. It's great golf action this Sunday at 11, brought to you by Diet Coke and Channel 2. We'd like to congratulate these makes for finally equipping their cars like the new Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra Special Edition. Now, if only they could get their prices in line. Oldsmobile, it's your money. These are the final days of the most fantastic offer ever made. Buy any big screen in Paul's huge inventory now. Make no payments and get free interest for over a year. You make no payments and get free interest till August 1996. This Mitsubishi 50-inch was $3,000. Now there's $600 off. It's only $23.98 with no payments and free interest till August 1996. Big screen TVs as low as $9.98. Free delivery seven days a week. These are the final days of Paul's fantastic offer. Don't miss out. I am okay. When drugs and drinking hit home, Sunday on Bob Navarro's Journal. As we look at Baseball America's first team All-America squad, we'll find most of these players participated in this year's College World Series, including Mark Kotze and Ted Silva from Cal State Fullerton, and Jeff Jenkins of USC, also on the team. Darren Erstad, the first player in the entire draft selected last week. <laughs> Seven to five for Cal State Fullerton. As the Titans bat in the fifth against Hi. Seth Etheridge, who came in last inning with two men on and one out and got out of the inning without allowing a run. Brian Lloyd has fly to center and been thrown out by the third baseman as he tried to bunt his way on. Brian is an outstanding college world series. I'm a little prejudiced about catchers, but he's really done a fine job. Little pop up near the first base dugout. And into the seat. A couple of rows deep. He has been terrific all season long. He started every game this year. And was first team all Big West Conference. MVP of the Big West Conference Tournament in Long Beach. Named to the South Regional All Tournament team as Titans won the South Regional with LSU. 86 mile per hour fastball fouled away. That's what makes the Titans success that much more impressive is when you consider this is their ninth trip to the College World Series, all in the last 21 years. And all nine times they've had to play in a regional on the road. They won more regionals away from their home ballpark. Than any team by far. That's the highest total is four. And really, that's because they're winning with a substandard facility relative to the other top programs around the country. They do have a new field, Titan Field, that was dedicated in 1992, but they didn't really finish the job when they built it. It doesn't really have adequate locker room facilities and offices and concession stands. That makes the job of what Augie's done look even bigger, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's why he left. He was at Cal State Fullerton in his first stint as coach for 15 years. Then he went to Illinois because he was frustrated about the lack of a stadium. He spent three years at Illinois, won the first Big Ten championship in 26 years for the Illini, wound up winning two Big Ten titles in three years, and came back when they built the new stadium. But he's still a bit frustrated they haven't finished the job. Nice try, but the middle of the infield couldn't pull it off. Rachel flipped to Alvarez, but the throw to first wasn't in time to get Lloyd, who has an infield hit. That would have been a nice play if they could have turned that that way. You know, we know that uh, West Rachel's arm isn't real strong at this point, and this way he's flipping his arm where a double play, but I think the feed is, um, caught Gabe just a little by surprise. It was kind of behind him, and he couldn't get his body closed, but that would have been a super play if they had made it. Now Joe Frazier with a runner at first and nobody out. In the fifth inning, Cal State Fullerton leads seven to five. That was their eighth hit. And they looked to bunt. Frazier took it back and looked at a ball. Joe today is flied to left and lined to the second base. Augie stays with his philosophy. He's looking for one run at a time. And you called it earlier. 
so often you look for one run you end up getting two or three or, or more. That's what happened in the first couple of innings today. Three times the team bunted the play by run and on all three occasions the bunter reached and they wound up with more than one run in the inning. The bunt has become a lost art in uh, the major league game. Part of it has to do with playing on artificial turf because it's very difficult to get that ball down and defense is charged right down your throat but uh, it is really a tremendous weapon a lot of people don't believe in the philosophy they don't believe in giving up and out and yet the Dodger team that I was on we won a world championship batting 245 in 1965 and we were very adept at bunting and hitting and running and squeezing and yet outstanding catching on that team yes especially the backup guys <laughs> I mean, Torberg, Tuborg. That's Torborg. Torborg. Yeah, Torborg. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Roseboro's caddy. Bunted along the first base line. Terrific bunt. Ball bridge goes to Rachel for the out. Sacrifice. 3-4. Lloyd's in scoring position with one out in the fifth. The Titans looking to add to their 7-5 lead. This is an excellent bunt right on the edge of the grass and it also is a very good play by Walbridge the first baseman very often this play can be difficult because with a ball that close to the line when the fielder comes up to throw he's throwing from right behind the runner and you can almost hit him or it can be a, a deflection type of thing but that was a nice play on both sides good bunt good defensive play. Now D.C. Olsen. The gray beard of this Cal State Fullerton team. Quick ball one in the dirt. Good block by Moeller. That bounced well out in front of the plate. Olsen looks like a tough guy. I mean, he is built. He's big. He's strong. And he's a senior. And you don't think much about what he's been doing. But he quietly is second in their ball club in home runs. Third in RBIs. And he's had an outstanding World Series. Including the one for two today. The single and run scored in the second. 23 years old, senior from Fullerton. Lifts that up into the breeze and right, and Jenkins, right up against the wall, made the catch. A ball that looked to be a routine fly that, that pushed all the way to the wall. Lloyd tagged and moved to third. He's there with two down. I'll tell you, if you're sitting or standing in either of those two dugouts, any time the ball goes in the air, especially the right field, you have to hold your breath. Breeze at 18 miles per hour, gusting up to 25. There have been five home runs in this game already, if you're just tuning in. But neither team has scored since the top of the third when the Trojans got two to cut the 7-3 to three deficit to 7-5. to five. Now Jack Jones, the shortstop. He looked at a strike. Jones, sophomore from Modesto, California. 20 years old. Was the starting shortstop last year as a freshman hit only 180. Raised his average more than 100 points this year. Mm. Did get out of the way of the fastball from Seth Etherton. Wow. That ball had some hair on it. He threw that ball and it just missed that front elbow. I think he thought he got hit with that afterwards, but he was waiting for it to hurt. Now that'll set everything up on the outside part of the plate now. If Ethers can go outside, uh, Jones will have a little bit of problem handling the ball away from him, I would think. He turned the bunt, he did go away, and Ethers didn't nip the corner one and two. We hear the adage so many times about college pitchers. Because of the aluminum bats, the theory is, they're afraid to pitch inside, and even when they move into the professional ranks with the wooden bats, they're so accustomed to pitching away, away, away all the time that the guys who come out of college don't pitch inside. And your experience professionally, did you find that to be true with yes, college pitchers? I really did, and I see a lot more breaking ball pitchers than you used to see. But I'll tell you, I've seen some good arms here uh, who they've thrown the ball well, the clubs that we have seen. Uh, my son, who pitched at the University of North Carolina, went on to pitch four years in the minor leagues. His name was Doug, was a left-handed pitcher, and found out the first time he started facing wooden bats in the Cape Cod summer, and he couldn't believe how he was breaking bats and he could pitch inside. It was, you know, something new to it. 
and it's probably a delightful experience as far as he was concerned. Yes, he was, it was something a revelation. He said, "I didn't realize you could do that." <laughs> Plus, where else would you rather be in the summertime than on Cape Cod in beautiful Massachusetts? Several of these players will be playing in the Cape Cod League this summer on the completion of the World Series. Jones strikes out, and the Titans leave a runner at third. After 5-7-5, Cal State Fullerton. When a traffic jam was two cars in the same town, Mobile Oil was there. When Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic, Mobile was on board. Mobile was in the world's first minivan, in the first space shuttle, and in the tanks of Desert Storm. We've been helping engines last for a long time. Mobile, changing oil for over 125 years. For years of beauty, protect your wood floors, furniture, and more with Minwax Polyurethane. Minwax contains pure urethane oil for a beautiful finish, tough enough to handle years of heavy traffic. Minwax makes and keeps wood beautiful. The newest way you can cure athlete's foot is the way doctors cure it. With the same ingredient they've prescribed millions of times, it's new prescription strength Desinex. Nothing cures athlete's foot better. New prescription strength Desinex, the doctor's cure. There's an unexplainable phenomenon hunting Pizza Hut. Is it another worldly spirit compelling people to eat their pizza the wrong way? No, it's new stuffed crust pizza with a ring of cheese and the edge of a new thinner crust. Incoming! And with a large just $9.99, every living person will be eating it the wrong way, crust first. I'm eating like a fleshy too! <laughs> you want this stuff for me, the Pizza Hut! Right now, with any purchase, get a hand puppet from the movie cast for only $1.49 and only at Pizza Hut. You mentioned at the top of the telecast, these two schools are only 40 miles apart. They know each other well, having played twice during the regular season. We asked USC coach Mike Gillespie, in this instance, what does familiarity breed? We'll have to change our signs. That's how familiar they are with us. Uh, the players have, uh, for the most part, grown up either with each other or playing against each other. I mean, literally, for 10 or 12 years of their baseball playing lives. Uh, so certainly we feel very, very familiar with them, and, uh, and I'm sure likewise is true. And they're in a nip and tuck battle through five innings. Seven runs, eight hits, an error for Cal State Fullerton. Five runs on four hits and one error for USC. It's been an economy of effort today offensively for the Trojans. They've had five base runners, and all five of them have scored. Alvarez 0 for 2. On the heels of his five-hit game last night, Mike Gillespie said yesterday, prior to last night's game, we want to win against Miami, but we'd also like to see Alvarez get some hits to boost his confidence. He had really been struggling. He'd been driving him nuts that he hadn't hit a home run, which he did last night. Apparently, home plate umpire Ken Eldridge has been hearing it from the USC dugout, and he has decided to put a halt to that. And Mike Gillespie came out to have a word with Ken Eldridge. Check swing roller. And Silva throws him out. And since the tremendous home run by Jenkins, Silva has retired eight in a row. The last man to reach for USC was Jenkins. And this ball landed in Lincoln. <laughs> Jeff has doubled and homered today. We're going to score twice. One strike on Jenkins. All four hits for USC have been extra base hits. A double and three homers. Jeff's brother, Brett Jenkins, was a middle infielder and a fine player at USC in the late 80s and early 90s, three years starting infielding. Who had the doubles record all time at USC until Alvarez broke it last night. Alvarez and Jeff Jenkins are best of friends. They've been roommates during their three years at USC. And Gabe broke 
Jeff's brother's record last night. He definitely does not get cheated. Somebody said that uh, they think he swings every once in a while with both feet off the ground. I don't think that's possible, but it sure looks like it. Whoa. Coach Gillespie told us yesterday when he has two strikes, as he does now, he shortens the stroke a little bit and makes adjustments when he goes deep in the count. He will occasionally go to the opposite field. And the breaking ball missed. The count is full on Jenkins, the junior from Rancho Cordova, California. out might have chased the pitch outside although it was close Silva's having a start similar to his performance a week ago against Stanford when he got knocked around early and then settled down he's now retired nine in a row and this is his third strikeout he has and he spotted that ball just where he wanted on the outer part of the plate and probably maybe a ball's width off the plate the ball was sinking away Jock Jones Reached on an error and scored in the second. Bounced back to the mound in the third. Jones is a sophomore from San Diego. Wasn't a very highly recruited player by major colleges out of San Diego High School. Gillespie recruited him at the urging of Joe DeViller, who is an assistant baseball coach at San Diego High, who called Gillespie regularly with updates on Jones. Coach Gillespie said, Coach DeViller was relentless. <laughs> and in retrospect, the Trojans are glad that he was. Jock Jones is a first team all Pac-10 player as a sophomore. Looks like a real good athlete. He roams the outfield well, he's got good speed, puts the ball in play. Got a real strong arm, not real accurate. We were watching infield and threw one over the catcher's head from left field, but he's it shows he's got a strong arm. Gillespie thinks he needs more confidence in that arm. Because if he believed he was as good a thrower as he can be, he'd be a better thrower. Because he's better when he doesn't have any time to think about a throw. He just picks it up and throws instinctively. He's a lot better off. Pretty well hit to left. Miranda makes the catch. And Silva has another one, two, three in it. Bottom of the sixth, upcoming in Omaha. The Titans seven, the Trojans five. You know, Linda's been my barber. Silent. Silent for years. Months. Months. And a while back, she told me. Stop squirming. No, no, no. She <laughs> said I should do something about my flakes. I said, get a new barber. She said, get new head and shoulders. I said, you're serious. She said, yeah. Now it has micro D, which fights flakes better without stripping your hair of the oils it needs. So my hair feels... Stop. No flakes. And I owe it all to my bar, uh, stylist. New head and shoulders, because great hair can't have flakes. Now with a revolutionary Penstar molecule, Pennzoil clings to moving parts. Works like liquid ball bearings. I have high mileage on my truck because I keep my oil changed. Engine problems? Before you try a tune-up, try gum out first. The solution could be less than five dollars. This week on Dave, Chris O'Donnell, Terry Garr, Branford Marsalis, Stephen Wright, Dennis Rodman, Jerry Lewis, and rescued Air Force hero Scott O'Grady. This week. CBS Sports coverage of the College World Series Championship game is sponsored by new and improved head and shoulders because great hair can't have flakes. Coca-Cola Classic, always the real thing, always Coca-Cola. 
and by Pennzoil, the motor oil that works like liquid ball bearing. There are many people who share that sentiment. Record-setting attendance throughout this College World Series, and today's crowd of 22,027 is a single-game College World Series record in this expanded Rosenblatt Stadium. Also set the record during this College World Series for total attendance. For 10 sessions, they drew 182,759 paid for an average per session of 18,276. Tony Martinez leads off for Cal State Fullerton. In the bottom of the sixth, the Titans bat with a two-run lead against Seth Etherton, who pitched an inning and a half of shutout relief and allowed only one infield hit. Starter Brian Cooper went three and a third for USC. Gave up seven runs, the three of them earned on seven hits. Cooper walked one, did not record a strikeout. Lifts one to relatively deep center. And Dawkins is there. And Martinez is now 0 for 2. You know, as we came into this game, one of the things we thought about was the fact that SC had to play a game last night and had to use their ace pitcher. And uh, their closer has a bad back. And you just wondered how much pitching they would have. And Mike Gillespie was able to turn to uh, Seth Etherton, who is really stopped the Cal State Fullerton offense for the uh, three innings that he's been in there and uh, you just never know this game is not played on paper and you just never know what's going to happen. Well, Gillespie didn't think the short turnaround time it was a night game last night would be a detriment to his team. Well, he's so excited about being in the championship game and so much adrenaline adrenaline flowing the fatigue will not be a problem. Tony Moran to the batter. He has singled and scored, grounded out to pick up an RBI. Last time with the walk, the only walk in this game. You know, that's so true about uh, being tired. It's not the next day that you're tired. It's two days later. And, uh, and when these kids are all gung up and ready for this game, you know, they're not going to be tired because of a late game. They're going to be delighted to be here, being able to compete again. Etherton has pitched only once in this College World Series. We mentioned that was a week ago Friday against USC, so he's well rested against Florida State, rather, for USC. Pitched two and two-thirds into that game. Gave up four earned runs on four hits. Against Florida State. Safe at first is Miranda. The throw from Alvarez was high. And Miranda is aboard for the third time. Mike Gillespie is going to argue. I think he thought the first baseman Walbridge got the tag on before the feet of Miranda reached the bag and he might have a point. Couldn't be sure what happened but the throw was very high from Alvarez and Walbridge went up for the ball at the same time Miranda slid. Yes he but I don't think he ever tagged him. The question might have been did he touch the base as he was coming down but I don't think he tagged the runner. Now here he's, he's definitely not know he's nowhere base. near the, the base. Question, if he got the runner there on the shoulder or head, they have an argument. Yeah, you're not kidding. Yeah, he's nowhere near the base. You're right. Looks like he kicked the runner but never tagged him. Well, from these angles, it looks like he definitely didn't get the tag down. And if he if he even came close to getting, yeah, he just missed tagging him in the helmet, and he was uh, legs were on the base as a result anyway. With an error on Alvarez. Second error in the game for USC. There's. 13th error in the six games in this College World Series. Yet they're only trailing by two in the national championship game. Miranda at first with one out for C.J. Anker. And the top of the order continues to thrive for Cal State Fullerton. The trio of Miranda, Anker, and Kotze today. Five for eight, including the two home runs by Kotze, who was driven in five. He's on deck. And they also have their three left-handers bunched together in Ankrum, Katze, and Giambi. And that gives the pitcher a little more uh, difficult time in that he can't use his breaking ball as, as much as he would like out away from a right-hander. 
now he's got to be a little more careful with the left handed hitters. Not a lot of speed on this Cal State Fullerton team, but they do have their leading base stealer at first in Miranda, who has 19. And sometimes it's not stealing the base, but it's the threat of doing it that can cause the pitcher to get a little wild. And he's behind in the count now. Etherton is behind in the count 2-0, partly because Miranda is jumping off and faking it first. The quick move to the plate by Etherton had Miranda heading back Going to back. first. Yes. It's like the pickoff move. Sometimes it's not the fact that you didn't pick somebody off, but you kept them close. The, the threat of the stolen base here is on their mind. Miranda draws another throw. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Cal State Fullerton leads by a score of seven to five. The Titans are. 56 and 9 this year. They've won 17 in a row. They're the number one team of the nation. And that's back in our direction. And if the Titans win today, they'd be 57 and 9. And a winning percentage of 86.4, which would be the best winning percentage by a national championship team since 1975. When Texas won it all with a 56 and 6 record. That's a 90% winning percentage. Not bad for a rebuilding team. <laughs> it gets through Mulder. On the ball in the dirt, Miranda moves to second. He's had a free ride to second, reached on the air, and then moves up on a wild pitch. Now this hurts here. One of the guys affected most by the faking is the catcher. He wants fastballs. Well, right here he called a breaking ball. And sure enough, the breaking ball was way out in front of the plate. The ball that's way out in front of the plate is almost impossible for a catcher because you don't know how you can't short hop it. You just try to square off and, and eventually it either goes too high or it bounces off to the right. It's a very difficult pitch. Check swing, dribble to the left. Alvarez cut it off and a nice play on the run. He got anchored by a step. That was a very nice play. The base running was not real exceptional there because if the if uh, Miranda had gone along with the shortstop a little bit, he could have run right by him, gone to third base. But Alvarez made an outstanding play. That's a real athletic play there. He threw, throws this ball off balance and shows a real strong arm. Nice play. Take any chances with Cops Day, who's already hit two homers against the starter Cooper. There's Cops Day's dad, Steve, not very happy about this development. They don't take their chances with Jeremy Giambi. Now, you'd like to say that is really a smart move. I mean, when you've got a guy as hot as this guy is, you can't take a chance. Invariably, you'll see a turn on you, and the next guy gets a base hit. But uh, you've got to take your chances. This is playing the percentages. This is a good move. It may help Kotze in one regard. He's trying to set the single-season Cal State Fullerton record for batting average, which is 417, held by Sam Pavada in 1979 when the Titans won their first College World Series championship, led by Tim Wallach. Not there the two for three today would set the record. Started the day at 421. Todd says at first. Miranda at second with two down. In the sixth, seven to five for Cal State Fulton. Jeremy Giambi followed one back here. Giambi's been struggling a little bit in the College World Series, and this would be a big one for him. This would be a real boost for his club, would put him up by three if he could uh, slice a base hit somewhere here. He's got to put this ball in play and line driver down. All three times today, he's hit the ball to center, once for a single, the other two times on fly ball out. Kotze, by the way, now hitting 424. So he would set the single season record. He won the Triple Crown of the Big West Conference this year. One ball, one strike on Giambi. Sophomore from Covina, California, out of South Hills High School. 
Interesting sign from Coach Gillespie who calls the pitches. And Moeller wants it again. Perhaps they were too interesting. <laughs> or not interesting enough. Those are interesting. It almost looks like he's showing what pitches they are, and then maybe it's a decoy. It might be how he's holding the other arm or how he's standing in the dugout. Go on one. He made the right call. Nice breaking ball from Etherton. One and two on Giambi. I was never real big on calling pitches from the dugout, but we're talking about a different level here. And what you've really done is taken the monkey off the back of the pitcher and the catcher by giving them from the dugout. If something goes wrong, you got somebody to blame. And Etherton looked towards second, trying to keep Miranda close. Brian Lloyd is on deck. The one two pitch. He struck him out. Painted the outside corner to get out of the inning. Atherton has pitched two and two thirds innings of scoreless relief, but after six, the Titans still lead by two. National Car Rental gives you what other car rental companies don't. A choice. Mid-size row. Choose your car right on the lot from the car class you've reserved. Check out the make, the model, the color. It's that easy. Because at National, we not only keep you moving, we keep you moving in the car you choose. I took the red one. It's you. Ain't nothing gonna break up my stride. Nobody gonna slow me down. Oh, no. History teaches primordial perspiration shouldn't mess with one's style. Consider this powerful discovery. Bright guard, pure power, clear gel. Unastoundingly clear gel. Thus, it goes on clear without any flaky white stuff protecting one powerfully. For when it comes to protection, one shouldn't mess around. Bright guard, clear gel. Anything less would be uncivilized. If you need new tires, you don't need to shop around. Sears Auto Center has all the top name brands and sizes to fit whatever you drive. Goodyear, Michelin, BF Goodrich, always at unbeatable low prices. And right now, all Bridgestone tires are on sale 5 to 15% off, featuring the Bridgestone Road Handler with a 75,000 mile warranty and free road hazard coverage. So hurry into Sears Auto Center today. Heading to the late innings now, top of the seventh upcoming, USC trails by two. Let's rejoin Michelle Tafoya. Thanks, John. I'm with Ron Maestri, who is the chair of the NCAA Baseball Committee, and that becomes a bigger job every year because this event continues to get big, as we just heard, with a single-game record crowd. Well, it does, and uh, Michelle, the people of Omaha keep turning out. We set uh, individual session records, over 18,000 people per, per session. Uh, total attendance, 182,000 for the tournament, and uh, individual game record of 22,000 plus uh, for today's ball game. So it's uh, tremendous. And next year is the 50th anniversary. How do you plan to hype that one up? Well, 50th anniversary, uh, 46 years uh, in Omaha. We're planning a lot of things. We're going to make improvements here to the ballpark. New uh, $3.1 million uh, renovation of the press and. Uh, indoor batting cages so uh we just keep getting better and better and the additions continue to pay off thanks for your time sir thank you sean thank you michelle first two years of the college world series was played in kalamazoo 1949 in wichita and ever since it's been here in omaha i really can't picture this event anywhere else no i remember of course it's so long ago i can barely remember when i played in college at rutgers but i remember everybody's goal is to get to omaha once you become a college player and you did your part leading the nation in hitting in 1963. Scarlet Knights. Scarlet Knights, that's right. You're telling me Fred Hill is now the baseball coach here, Brian Hill's brother. Yes, uh, Fred Hill has done a terrific job. They replaced Matt Bolger, my coach, who was in the College Hall of Fame. Nice program. I went to the Dodgers and had to hear all about SC. You know, I used to talk to Fairley and Gabrielson and all those guys about USC this, USC that. They sure have had a good program. Well, if you want to irritate them back now, just call them Southern Cal. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Thad Molder leads off for USC. He is lined to second, lined to center. Hasn't had much luck today. Bottom part of the order, six, seven, and eight coming up. Molder, Walbridge, Diaz against Silva, who has set down ten in a row. After a rocky start, he has now thrown 90 pitches. Mentioned Molder's injured knee. He suffered that injury a little over a year ago while playing frisbee football. It must be a little tougher than we thought. <laughs> He's going to leave Omaha and head to the USC, uh, the USA rather, team trials in Tennessee. The team coached by LSU Skip Bertman. And if he doesn't make the team, he'll head on to the Cape Cod League. You know, it's interesting. You bring up the Cape Cod League. A lot of the players on the West Coast will go to Alaska in the mm -hmm. summer. My son Doug went up there for one summer and the Cape the next summer. But also some of the Western schools will send guys up to the Cape. But uh, two very good college leagues. Greatest players in Major League Baseball history have played in the Cape League and played in Alaska. Moeller is aboard from a long drought for USC is over. They have their first base runner since Jenkins homered with two outs in the third. That ball is down in the zone and Moeller just pulls it in the hole. Ted Silva got the ground ball he was looking for, but it was in the right in the hole. That's the first single today for the Trojans. Mentioned they've had five base runners prior to Molder reaching, but all five have scored. Walbridge trying to reach for the first time today. He is struck out swinging and fly to right. Even his first year at USC, transferred him to Long Beach City College. Where he hit 420 last year. Silva hoping he has the right grip. Missed outside, one ball and one strike. That's some great camera work to be able to watch how the pitcher spins the ball around to get the feel of the seams. He uses a two seam grip. His fingers go along the seams to get more action. And he'll keep rotating until he feels where the seams feel best for him. That most pitchers would like to have the seams raised a little. That Wilson ball is a good, good ball to pitch with. It has raised seams on it. Good for a breaking ball and good for a sinker ball. Here's that two seam grip along the seams. That allows you to make the ball move more on your fastball. Down the line, fair ball. And they have to tag him and do for the double play. That was very close at first base. First base umpire Dale Williams immediately signaled fair ball. DC Olsen manages a smile. And it's a double play, three to six. Yeah, this ball's hit real hard, and it's a great reaction play by Olsen at first base uh, taking this ball on his glove side it almost looked like it was foul boy there it did and then he touched the base and of course now that takes the force off you have to throw to second they have to make a tag but that was an outstanding play and Ernie Diaz is the batter two outs and the base is now empty in the Southern California seventh inning he has it a three run homer in the second he rips one down the line now that's a big call at first base on the fair versus foul Diaz is two for three with two extra base hits this one's a double boy that was a big call you're not kidding but it's much easier for us up here we have a second look and a little different angle but that was one of those bang bang plays right over the base. Now this is Diaz. He's hit that ball well. You can see he's got an open stance and he gets that ball, gets to the ball down in the strike zone because he's already open. He never closes up again and lined the ball down the left field line. Wes Rachels. Go for two today. Trying to extend his hitting streak. He's hit in all five college World Series games prior to today. He's a freshman from Los Angeles, 19 years old. Was recruited and came to USC as a walk-on out of Loyola High School in Los Angeles. He's only hitting 245 for the year coming into the College World Series. As you mentioned, has been all over the bases in the first five games. 
as a coach or manager, if the bottom of your order can pick up a big run like that, it's a real bonus for you. It was in the fifth inning when their Cal State Fullerton Titans had a runner at third base and two are out, and the bottom of their order could not get the run in. Now, Rachel could not hold on that ball. He went through with that swing on a ball that was breaking on the outside part of the plate, and he's down 0-2 now in the count. Now comes the philosophy with a lot of pitchers. Do you waste the ball way out, or do you try to make a real good pitch? If you're going to throw a slider away from him, make sure you waste it. Oh, boy. <laughs> Plate's getting wider. Wow. And lower. CBS Sports coverage of the 1995 College World Series will continue after this message and a word from your local station. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but yeah, I took the high endurance challenge from Old Spice because I didn't really think it could work better than my old deodorant, but it does. It evaporates less quickly. It also lasts longer, protects better. Try it. If you don't think it's the best, call 1-800-PROVE-IT and they'll buy you a stick of yours. So if you still think every deodorant works the same, take the high endurance challenge from Old Spice because now you got proof, guaranteed. This is CBS. There's a new scratcher game coming from the California Lottery. It's called the Riverboat Riches. And it's really loaded with extra prize money. I told you. The Riverboat Riches with over two million in extra prize money. Hey, if you like winning, your ship has come in. Uh, I mean both. Well, whatever it is, it's swamped with money. Action News, Emmy Award winner for LA's best half-hour newscast. Well, as we noted last week, Mark Kotze, the best hitter for Cal State Fullerton, their starting center fielder, is also a dominant closer. And while his team is at bat, he's getting in some warm-up throws in the bullpen and left. Kotze would be the eighth batter this inning, so he'll have plenty of time to warm up. From what we have seen, ordinarily when he warms up, he comes in, so Augie Garrido might go to him for two innings. Brian Lloyd begins the seventh against Seth Etherton. Lloyd one for three, an infield single. In the fifth, Joe Frazier on deck, then D.C. Olsen. 56-year-old Augie Garrido, 1,106 career victories. 885 of those at Cal State Fullerton, looking for his third national title and trying to join the legendary Rod Dato as the only coaches to win a title in three different decades. They were checking to see whether there was a swing on that rather than just a check swing, and it definitely was not. And right now, SC is a little disgruntled with the uh, the umpiring. They've had a couple questionable calls behind the plate, and they've been barking at them most of the game out of the dugout, and they're they're very frustrated at this point. Well, there's no question that the strike three that was called in the last half inning on Rachel's was a terrible call. We also looked at the play again on the ground ball down to first base that wound up as a double play. And it appeared to us to have been a fair ball and a good call on the double play. Rachel's the catch of the soft line drive by Lloyd for the first out of the seventh. You know, this is interesting. As I see Katze down there warming up in the bullpen, it makes you wonder about the philosophy used by Augie or, or a lot of different managers. Do you bring your closer in when there's already trouble going on, or do you want to give him a cushion and bring him in to start the inning? Now, of course, this is the last game for them, and he might not be worrying about two innings. But he's already got an All-American on the mound in Silva. Now, it'll be interesting to see if he's just getting him loose right now to have him ready in case there's trouble or whether he's going to start the inning with him. Yeah, it will be interesting. You mentioned we took a look at the play 
between innings, and this is what we looked at. As you watch this replay, and it was called a fair ball, you see the ball hit the line, and it skips into the glove, and it looks like that glove is right in front of the base. That appeared to be a fair ball, and a quick call made by Dale Williams. Bunt by Frazier, and Atherton threw it into the runner, and he is safe at first. Walbridge couldn't glove it. A good bunt by Frazier for a hit, his first. He's one for three today. Sean, this scares me to death, this play here. I have seen more guys get really hurt. Clifford Floyd of uh, Montreal broke his wrist in about five places on this play. The throw is into the runner, and Walbridge has to reach into the runner. My youngest son, who plays in the Yankee organization now, had one of these plays. Now, you can see he reached into the runner to catch the ball, and he's lucky that he didn't really hurt himself. And now you see the trainer and, and Mike Gillespie out talking to him. There was a player with the White Sox years ago, Kelly Paris, who shattered his elbow on that same play. That is a terrible play. My son broke his upper arm in a play like that, uh, trying to stay in on it. It just scares me. Well, they scored in an error. That's kind of tough scoring. I mean, there's no guarantee he's going to be out. And that was a pretty good bunt. Yes, outstanding bunt. The third error charge to USC. So it's seven runs on eight hits and one error for Cal State Fullerton. Five runs, six hits, and now three errors for USC. D.C. Olsen singled and scored in the second. Slide out twice since. D.C. Olsen really has the ability to jack a ball out of here. If Seth Etherton is concerned too much about the runner at first base and does not locate well here. You just might see this big first base and senior leader of this club turn on one. Final game of Olsen's career at Cal State Fullerton. Third trip to Omaha in four years. This is starting first baseman in 92 when the Titans lost to Pepperdine. DC's had an eventful time this year here in Omaha. Last Sunday night he woke up in intense pain, was rushed to the hospital. He passed a kidney stone. Played the next afternoon, went three for four. <laughs> We're in the seventh. Cal State Fullerton batting against Seth Etherton. He's pitched very well in relief of Brian Cooper. And the Titans lead seven to five. Is that what you call real pressure? Yeah, that is. No fun at all. What? I've been told by those who have gone through that. You wouldn't recommend that to your teammates as a no. way to improve your hitting. Passing your kidneys. No. You wouldn't recommend rupturing your Achilles tendon to other coaches either. If you're Augie Garrido, you'll be in a cast for up to six months. But he'll be smiling for six months if his team wins today. Played in the Cleveland Indians organization. Went to Fresno State. Played at the College World Series in 1959. Both of these coaches played here in Omaha. In fact, Mike Gillespie was a member of the 1961 team that won a national championship. He was the left fielder who doubled and scored the winning run in USC's 1-0 win over Oklahoma State in the national championship game in 61. And he had not been back to Rosenblatt Stadium since then, prior to this trip. But he wanted to earn the trip back with a team rather than just come back for the heck of it. Two balls, a strike on Olsen. One out, a runner at first. Bottom of the seven. 7-5, seven, Cal State Fullerton. what you worry about as a coach or a manager that your pitcher is, is worrying too much about a runner at first base the entire season he only stole four bases this year and you've got to be careful you've got a big thunder hitter at the plate you can't mess around you can't get behind you can't walk him you don't want to walk him put a runner scoring position oh. and that's ball four close pitch called the ball the first walk thrown second walk thrown rather by Everton and the third by USC pitchers today. No action of Mike Gillespie's bullpen. Kotze has stopped throwing in the Cal State Fullerton pen. 
And Gillespie is going to the mound. And looking at the home plate umpire, Ken Eldridge on the way. He started chatting with Eldridge in the very first inning. He came out as of the top of the first and talked with Eldridge. And now Eldridge is heading with a brisk walk toward the USC dugout. And he continues to hear it from that side. When the inning ended before, the whole coaching staff was getting into it with the umpire. And now I think what you've got here is Mike Gillespie is going to stay there and talk to his team until his umpire comes out and tells him to break it up and he's liable to go at it with him. That's a, a trick of, of managers a lot will wait and make the umpire come out because you cannot argue on balls and strikes. So you can wait and make him come out and then you can chew on him a little bit. Well, here he comes. Ken Eldridge from Atlanta, Georgia in his second College World Series has been up. And somebody's been thrown out of the dugout by the first base umpire, Dale Williams. Necessarily Frank Sanchez, the assistant coach. Or Frank Cruz, who's also moved into the picture. Sanchez has had an eventful time. He's the pitching coach. His wife, April, gave birth to their second child during the time here in Omaha. And now it looks like Dale Williams. It looked like he wanted to start after somebody else. And he was waving his arms just to say enough of this. Meanwhile, Gillespie's still at the mound chatting with the home plate umpire, Eldridge. And let's see what Michelle Tafoya can tell us. Michelle? Well, Rob Klein has been jawing with the home plate umpire for uh, part, of, part of this inning in particular. He's just been questioning the calls in terms of balls and strikes. When Mike Gillespie went to the mound to talk with his pitcher, uh, he got into it with the ump, just verbally, sort of stepped out toward the, toward the field. They started to have a, quite a discussion, and it looked for a minute there like he might get caught. But for the moment, he's here. Well, they Don? definitely ejected somebody. First base umpire Dale Williams made the ejection signal. And we'll try to word from the USC dugout. That's who it was who got caught. Rob Klein is an assistant coach. Well, they had reason to beef about that third strike call on Rachel's, but other than that, I haven't really noticed where this home plate umpire has been a factor in the game. Well, there have been some close calls on third strikes on balls on the inside part of the plate, and I think they've probably been off the plate, but there's nothing wrong with that if you're consistent. That's right. Well, you ask the umpire to be as consistent. Now, two men on, one out. Jack Jones, the batter. Atherton after the delay, missed up and away. Jack Jones would like nothing better to make up for the fifth inning when he struck out with a runner at third base. He'd love to put this ball in play safely here somewhere. Jones is the MVP of the South Regional. And Fullerton earned its trip here to Omaha. I think it might be tiring. The pitch is starting to come up. And there will be bullpen action momentarily for USC. Runner at second is Joe Frazier. And at first, D.C. Olsen. Sometimes you worry about having a long discussion with your pitcher or out there in an umpire's argument that you might get your pitcher pulled off. Fastball just below the belt for a strike. Jack Kropchek, who was so effective last night, and protecting the USC lead against Miami he is warming up. Two one pitch. Well hit the center. Dawkins drifting back to make the catch. Frazier tag. He takes third. The throw goes toward second. Two down and runners at first and third. In the seventh inning, Cal State Fullerton is batting with a seven to five lead. Now Tony Martinez, the number nine hitter. 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt. He bounced the short and fly to center. 
college in his first year with the Titans as a junior college transfer from Porterville College. He was torn between Cal State Fullerton and Fresno State. He didn't have the grades out of junior college to go to either place. He got his grades up at the last moment. Here he is in the College World Series, having decided to play for his hometown university. Now we've got a situation here, Sean, with two outs, runners at first and third. If they get two strikes on this hitter, they might try a trick play where they'll run the runner from first base to try to see if they can uh, break the runner from third. Now, Augie doesn't do a lot of trick stuff like that. He plays inside baseball, and of course, SC has just given their catcher a signal what to do. He might not even be throwing through the second base if, if Olsen should go. One ball, one strike on Martinez. But a lot of things can happen. If you put a runner in, in motion, and the catcher comes up and he tries to look to third, the runner back at third base, he's liable to throw the ball away in the middle of the diamond. That's why I don't like catchers to come up even looking at third base. Just come up and throw to second. Slicing out of play to the right. Very often they teach young catchers that if there's a runner at third and the runner from first breaks for second, they say, look them back. That is the most difficult thing for a catcher to do. First of all, if you turn your head and look toward third base, your shoulder comes open and you can't throw the ball on a line to second base properly. It tends to stand you up. I would rather have the third baseman, if the runner's way off, raise his hand so out of the corner of your eye you can see it. That's in the air and right field and well hit. And gone. A three-run homer for the smiling Tony Martinez. And it's 10-5 in favor of Cal State Fullerton. Those are the first runs allowed by Etherton, and it's the second three-run homer of the ball game for CSUF. Now this is amazing. This pitch almost has Martinez beaten. This ball is, is at his letter height, and he was late on this ball, and he hit it out of the ballpark the other way. That ball really looked like it had him beaten, and he hit it the other way and went out of the ballpark. Amazing. Martinez doesn't hit many, but he's hit some big home runs. He had two three-run homers in a single game against Rice in the regionals on May 27th. And a lot more breathing room now for Cal State Fulton. They lead by five in the seventh inning. All three runs in this inning unearned, and there are seven unearned runs on the board in this game for Cal State Fulton. You mentioned sooner or later, USC's poorest defense is going to hurt the Trojans. It has here. And that's going to hurt as well. Miranda with a tremendous play. His 12th of the season. And it's 11 to 5. And nothing chintzy about the home runs we are seeing today. That was a blast. No, there was no question about this ball. This is a fastball and out over the plate, and Miranda just extended and hit that ball over the center field backdrop to the left of dead center field, back over past the light tower. Way up on that light tower. Wow. My goodness. Smoking indeed. Back-to-back -back homers. Seventh time in this College World Series that there have been back-to-back -back homers. And Tony Miranda has knocked Etherton out of the ball game with that one. The new pitcher, Jack Kropchek, when we come back. Last year, I flew a quarter of a million miles. But that's what I do for a living. So I know that for most people, that flight is a big part of what makes a trip good or bad. Some want to work. Some relax. And some... They just want to get away. And knowing the difference, well, that comes with flying a quarter of a million miles and seeing a thousand different faces. When learning something new, you often give control to someone else. It's the same with investing. But soon, with the right kind of help, you're ready to take charge. 
you're ready for Charles Schwab. The whole idea behind Schwab is to help investors help themselves. Schwab's Mutual Fund One Source service provides you with over 300 no-load funds to choose from, and our select list can help you choose the funds that may be best for you. We're Charles Schwab, and we're helping investors help themselves. Tobacco contains nicotine. It's a drug, and it's addictive. Once you start chewing tobacco, it controls you, and you can't stop. Understand, you don't need it. If you or someone you know needs help or information concerning drug abuse, call this toll-free number, 1-800-662-HELP. This message provided by the NCAA. Davis Love is the third round leader at the Kemper Open. Yesterday, he matched the course record with a 63, and Corey Pavin today matched it himself with a 63. He's in second. Third round coverage coming up. The new pitcher for USC, their third of the afternoon, is Jack Krofcheck, freshman from Scottsdale, Arizona, who earned his third save of the year last night as he pitched two and a third scoreless inning against Miami to save it for Randy Flores. He comes in with a score 11 to 5 in favor of Cal State forward in two outs and the base is now empty. Jack Krofcheck, I was watching him last night pitching. He really dazzles you. He doesn't throw hard. He's got a nice curveball. He, he's got um, a circle change, and he throws strikes. And he just keeps the hitters off balance, and probably that's why they could bring him back today. He doesn't try to throw too hard and put any strain on his arm. Krofcheck looking in at C.J. Ankrum. Who popped it up. And Dawkins comes a couple of steps in to make the catch. The four unearned runs for the Titans in the seventh. Three run homer by Martinez, solo homer by Miranda. 11 to 5 as we head to the eighth. I slipped on, on uh, right overboard. Hi, boy. Ocean view. I don't think so. I'm in a bit of a hurry. The American Express card. It's a lifesaver. To apply, look for this in your mailbox. You build a razor with a precision groove to help the Norelco lift and cut system shave closer than ever before. And what do you get? The Norelco razor, our closest shave ever. Do you have a problem with food sticking to your barbecue? Just spray all natural Pam on a cold grill and your problem will go away. Pam makes barbecuing less sticky. This summer, the Speedway scorches. It's one of NASCAR's hottest races. The Michigan 400. Feel the heat next Sunday on CBS. Welcome back to Omaha. Sean McDonough with Jeff Torborg and Michelle Tafoya, our producer Bob Dekas. Our right, director Mike Arnold, happy to have you with us for college baseball's national championship game. The Cal State Fullerton Titans looking for their third national championship lead, 11 to 5, as USC bats in the eighth. Cal State Fullerton got hooked on this 11 run bit. Their last three games, they scored 11 runs. Last two games against Tennessee, today against USC. Walter Dawkins did a solo home run in the third. The Trojans haven't scored since the third when Dawkins and Jenkins each hit solo homers. That's a pulled foul. 
Certainly a much different experience for Ted Silva this year at the College World Series. Last year as a sophomore, he had what sports writer Mike Penner described as a Mitch Williams moment. Semi-final round, College World Series, and extra innings last year in the 12th. He gave up a home run to Georgia Tech shortstop Nomar Garcia Parra that put Georgia Tech into the championship game and sent the Titans home for the year. This might be his last act today as he strikes out Dawkins and the pitching coach George Horton is going to the mound. Here's an excellent slider that he throws down and away. Boy, when you have when you've got a slider that bites and bites late, uh, it can really make and your right hander makes a right hander look tough. And Mark Kasse gets a new glove, his pitching glove. He'll be on the mound trying to save it when we come back. Wrinkle-free dockers. Pants so soft, they shrug off wrinkles. Dear Thompson, when I ran out of Thompson's Waterfield waterproofer, a clerk said, try this one. They're all the same. What a mistake. Two years later, rain still rolls off the Thompson side. The other side soaks it up. Thanks, Thompson's. Steven Zukowskis. The newest way you can cure athlete's foot is the way doctors cure it. With the same ingredient they've prescribed millions of times. It's new prescription strength Desinex. Nothing cures athlete's foot better. New prescription strength Desinex. The doctor's cure. A new set of academic standards for freshmen is now in effect. To practice, play, or receive an athletic scholarship, freshmen need a 2.0 grade point average in at least 13 core courses in high school and a minimum score on the ACT or SAT. Make it a point to talk to your coach or guidance counselor about these requirements. Prepare yourself now. It's never too early to hit the books. This message provided by the NCAA. Bring home all of the excitement and action of the 1995 College World Series in the official souvenir program. It features information on this year's championship team, plus records from the past. To receive your copy, send $9 to... 1995 NCAA College World Series Program, P.O. Box 99128, Louisville, Kentucky, 40269. Please allow four to six weeks for delivery. This message provided by the NCAA. Ted Silva finished after seven and a third inning. That's the same amount of time that he pitched in the first game of this College World Series against Stanford. And he's in line to be a winner again as 18th of the year. If the bullpen can protect it, Cott stays on. In what is not a save situation, he's trying to protect the five, rather the six run lead, 11 to five. He has appeared in 20 games. He saw his amazing earned run average of 0.33, and he is 25 strikeouts and 27 in the third inning. And Steve Chatham has taken his place in center field. And there's a pinch hitter as well, Brian Ponchak, sophomore from Fountain Valley, California. He's a power hitter. Up with one out of the base is empty. You know, we watched uh, Mark Cutley come in the other day and throw real hard. He's really got a good live fastball. He made a mistake on one pitch to the Stanford second baseman on a rolling split finger, and it was hit for a double. He said enough of that and he turned around and just threw the ball right by the rest of the lineup. And Ponchak the pinch hitter is an interesting story. He's a great big guy. And Mike Gillespie was telling us the other day that he can put on a show in batting practice. And I watched him today. But he's going to have to turn the dial up much more quickly to get this thing going because Katze is throwing bullets. They have an 88 on the gun. Yeah, look to a that. full count. It looks harder than that for me. Must be the slow gun. <laughs> well, you know, the ball is uh, registers higher down in the zone. Fastballs up in the zone that registers high. And he blew him away with that one. Ponchak 
strikes out. Here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, Sean, there's been a lot of confusion about which member of this USC coaching staff was actually ejected a little bit earlier. Uh, Rob Klein, who's the first base coach, had really got into quite a quite an argument with the home plate ump, and we thought that he might have been thrown out, but he, in fact, stayed. It was Jacob Hoy, who was one of the team's two managers, who ended up getting ejected and is no longer in the dugout. Sean? One of the student managers <laughs> had a little too much to say uh, for the first base umpire, Dale Williams. You know what that is? That's convenient so they don't lose a player. They'll say, okay, get this guy out of here. The poor manager <laughs> takes the heat. Now Gabe Alvarez, the team down by six. And Kotze ahead of him 0-2. Maggie Garrido believes that Kotze's future is as an outfielder and as a hitter. Very impressive pitcher as well. Amazing thing, he's only a sophomore. He's accomplished all this and he's only a sophomore. Kotze from Santa Fe Springs, California. He told us about 15 miles east of Los Angeles. Grew up a big Dodger fan. Well, by next year, they're going to be 28 teams wanting to grab hold of him if they have a shot. This kid is very talented. His 0 2 is down and in. I think he's also an excellent golfer. Well, he gets great pleasure out of beating his father in golf. <laughs> he's an eight handicap golfer, plays golf right handed. at the plate still one and two two out bases empty top of the eighth and time running out on the Trojans they look for their record setting 12th college world series title they entered this game at 49 and 20 for the season playing their best baseball lately having won 13 of the last 15. Last time USC lost its first game of a College World Series as they did this year. They lost to Miami. It was in 1970. And that year they came back to win the national title with four straight victories. And to duplicate that feat with five straight wins this year, but down by six in the eighth inning this afternoon. To center field. And the catch made by Steve Chatham, top base replacement in center. Bottom of the eighth up coming in Omaha. 11 to 5, the Titans. This is a commercial for cheese. Time for a snack. There's some cheese in the fridge. Be creative. Use your imagination. Throw some cheddar on your fruit. Roll a Munster with ham. Cheese can make any old snack taste terrific. My favorite? Jalapeno Jack. Melted on a muffin with salsa. Who knows? They're all irresistible. Suddenly I feel hungry, maybe even jealous. Mmm, looks good. May I? Give you back the new attitude with cheese. New from Thompson. Thompson's Wood Protector Deck Finish with natural golden toners to renew lost color and powerful three-way protection from water, sun, and mildew damage. Thompson's Wood Protector Deck Finish. Lasting beauty and protection all in one. No trendy health club. No $60 shorts. No bull. Speed Sex No Nonsense Formula gives you 110% protection. Like you, it never quits. Five minutes. We made a name for ourselves by inventing a wonder drug. And now, we're improving the diagnosis and treatment of major diseases. Our energy-absorbing foams make cars safer than ever. And our crop protectants help farmers produce a more abundant food supply. So much good we can do for the trouble. Oh, what a world it can be. Bayer. In healthcare, chemicals, and imaging technologies, we cure more headaches than you think. When we first met Jennifer Harbury, she was on a hunger strike in Guatemala, determined to find out who killed her husband. Where is she now? 60 Minutes, Sunday. These two teams have combined to hit seven home runs today, giving USC 14 in this College World Series and Cal State Fullerton 11. 
They rank one and two all time for home runs by a team within a college world series. Mark Kotze is at two today for the Titans in his first two at bats. A three run homer in the first inning. A two run shot in the second. Since then he has struck out and walked. Kotze is now batting 600 in this college world series where there's two for three today. 424 for the year which would be the Cal State fourth and single season record. He fouled one away for strike one with his two homers today he's at three in this CWS has driven in ten has scored seven has saved the game and is trying to protect another lead this afternoon. I think he's on his way to being the MVP of the College World Series at this score stands. Pretty good chance. <laughs> if not there ought to be an investigation. And a bolster his candidates he didn't catch all of that one. And Dawkins made the catch one out in the eighth. Records set this afternoon. Most home runs in the championship game by one team. Cal State Fullerton with four. And most home runs combined in the championship game with seven. The two teams have tied the record for most homers combined in any World Series game, championship or otherwise, with the seven. Conte has tied the championship game record with two homers. And tied the RBI record for the championship game with five. Giambi is safe. Crosscheck couldn't field it. Rachels couldn't get it to first quickly enough. And Giambi is aboard with one out in the eighth inning. Giambi runs well and he hits this ball right off of Crosscheck's glove. It deflected it towards second base, but Rachels cannot get enough on the ball to get Giambi, who runs well. See him circling the ball, trying to get where he can get around the ball and get a little angle and throwing the ball at first base, but doesn't have a chance. And now George Horton coming out to make sure that Giambi is okay. He might have injured himself going down the line. Of course, Augie Garrido can't come out himself because he's down in the dugout and seated on that motorized scooter. The seven home runs between these two teams ties a single game College World Series record. That record was set earlier in this CWS by Florida State and USC. Combined hit seven, Seminoles hit five, and the Trojans two. Brian Lloyd, the catcher, looked at strike one. He's one for four, an infield single in the fifth. In the top of the ninth, when USC will need at least six runs to tie, they have the middle third of their order coming up. Little pop up, shallow left center. Dawkins, the center fielder. Two down. Giambi back at first. It'll be Jenkins, Jones, and Moeller due up for USC in the ninth. Reached on the error charge to the pitcher Etherton on the throw of it hit Frazier last inning and Frazier scored on the three run homer by Tony Martinez. It made this a much different game. Seven to five when he hit it that made it ten to five Miranda hit a solo homer after the home run by Martinez. To make it eleven to five to knock out Etherton and bring in cross check. State Fullerton is also on its way to smashing the College World Series record for highest batting average by one team. At the moment, their team batting average is 371. The record is 349. Set by Oklahoma State in 1990. The 0-2. Fouled out of play to the right. 371. And you think that you would love to have one hitter hit 371 and their team has a team batting average of 371. 
Augie might uh, decide he's going to stay in that motorized chair for the rest <laughs> of his career. And they have scored 39 runs in four games. Toward the gap, racing to cut it off, Jock Jones. Giambi heads for third, and a bad play by Jones. He had no chance to get the runner going to third, and because he threw it toward third and missed the cutoff man, Frazier was able to move in a scoring position to second base. Well, that's youthful exuberance. He wanted to try to cut the guy off at third base. You've got to know ahead of time who's running and, and where the ball is and, and be sensible on where you're throwing the ball. That can really hurt a ball club. And SC's defense this whole series has not been very good and especially the last two nights they were lucky last night but uh, it's really jumped up and bitten them today put runners on extra outs in an inning you just can't have that eight of the 11 runs scored by Cal State Fullerton of an unearned run DC Olsen has singled and walked and has scored twice he's one for three Fullerton trying to wrap up this season with an 18-game winning streak. It'll be one shy of the longest winning streak in Titan history. They won 19 straight games in 1978, one year prior to their first national championship. Now, do you think he'll let his senior hit 3-0 and possibly his last at bat in college, potentially driving in two runs? Yes. I know you don't want to aggravate the opposition when you're up on them, but this is a situation he's got to let this kid hit, I would think. Absolutely. And he does, and he hammered one foul. Because as we've seen, it's a cliche, but in this instance it's true. Perhaps it isn't true that no lead is safe, but there aren't many leads that are safe the way the ball has been flying out of Rosenblatt over the last 10 days. Well, that's a very good point. This is his senior leader. He's got to give him a chance. He'd love to see him last at bat, possibly driving a couple runs. Well, he fouled it back here, making it a full count. Two outs, two men in scoring position. Bottom of the eighth, Cal State Fullerton, the number one team in the country. Leads 11 to 5 for Augie Garrido. If Cal State Fullerton wins today, Augie would join a very short list. Only three other coaches have won three College World Series titles. Jerry Kendall of Arizona, Dick Siebert of Minnesota, Bobby Winkles of Arizona State. And the only other coach with more titles than three, Rod Dato, we mentioned earlier. Down the line, Spinner, Wallbridge, plays it himself, and the Titans lead too. We go to the ninth, last chance for USC. Augie Garrido and the Cal State Fullerton Titans lead by six. with flavor more flavor than ever this fast too it's the right thing to do popping with flavor sprinkles right with flavors they're new and the taste and dosing right thing to do hang with sour cream and onion now more flavor on the chin let's back and let's squeeze across the lid popping with flavor sprinkles right with flavor once you pop you can't stop Baseball sure have changed, Junior. Yeah, the next time we place the diamond. And can you imagine facing three pitches? Emerson on base. Oh, the base ejector got him snoozing. He goes Why did it all change? All sports. The game just got too easy. The unsurpassed taste of all sport. A third more carbs than Gatorade for energy could make a difference. Next yeah. up. Your grandson's up. Ken Griffey the fourth. You can ask. It's going. It's going. Watch out, center for Oh! Center Bush got him. He was robbed. All sports body quencher. The game will never be the same. The newest way you can cure athlete's foot is the way doctors cure it. With the same ingredient they've prescribed millions of times. It's new prescription strength Desinex. Nothing cures athlete's foot better. New prescription strength Desinex. The doctor's cure. Dear Thompsons, I depend on Thompsons Water Seal Waterproofer. But when my crew ran out, they finished with another brand. Did I hear about it? But you could see the Thompsons working. The other side, nothing. Thompsons works for me. Ray Hayes. 
Detective Raymond Avia is close to catching a killer. Dangerously close. But you're talking about one of the most productive officers on the entire force. Andy Garcia. My wife called. No. Richard Gear. Don't do anything. Internal Affairs. Parental discretion advised. Tuesday. Welcome back to Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, Nebraska. Sean McDonough with Jeff Torborg and Michelle Tafoya. The Cal State Fullerton Titans of Augie Garrido are three outs away from their third national championship. First since 1984. And USC will send its big bats to the plate of the ninth inning. Batters four, five, and six. Jeff Jenkins, Jock Jones, and Chad Moeller against Mark Kotze. Jenkins two for three, a double, a homer, and a strikeout. Dante came on last inning and retired both batters he faced. One of them with a strikeout. Well, Augie's got the man he wants on the mound to close out any game, but especially the, the final game. And he also has a matchup of left against left. The next two hitters, Jenkins and Jones, are both left-handed. And I like that from a percentage standpoint, I would think. Kotze wants to do is issue a walk or two to get a rally started, but he's falling behind here, three and all. Oh! He came right down the middle with the fastball. <laughs> Out of play, and now the count is full. Maggie Garrido off the card and onto the crutches and ready to celebrate I'll tell you what he couldn't sit there any longer he told us he's a pace from the dugout I know that feeling he just couldn't sit in that part in the ninth inning beach ball is come on the field dugout like the situation a misconception I believe Jeff that this program has gone down under Mike Gillespie he's had them in the NCAA playoffs seven times in nine years this is the first time they've made it to Omaha but they have been in the playoffs seven times in his nine years whereas in the eight years prior to his arrival they'd only been in the NCAA tournament once so he took a program that was on the slide and has brought it back up the national promise. He really has. Several of those uh, tournaments he was in the final game and just couldn't get through that last game. And Jenkins is battling. It's still three and two. Great tradition at FC. They just, uh, you know, legacy of they were the first real power and consistent power in college baseball. Everybody could look to as being the prototypical program that everybody would like to have. Strikes him out. The Titans are two outs away from the national championship. The Titans trying to become the first number one, two, or three seed to win the national championship since seeing began in 1988. And this year, the Titans are the number one seed. And their fans are starting to make more and more noise with each pitch. Jock Jones, 0 for 2. But he did reach on a sacrifice attempt and an error was made and he scored on the home run by Diaz in the second. Pass caught say, and through the middle. That's hit number 105 this season for Jones. And it appears he'll come up just a couple of hits short of the single season school record. Rich Dower with 108 hits in 1974 holds the USC mark. Now Moeller singled in his last at bat. He's one for three lined out in his first two plate appearances today.
One strike on the sophomore catcher. 11-5. Cal State Fullerton leads with one out in the ninth. Well, there was one of the uh, signs that was given from the Cal State Fullerton dugout as to what the pitch is, what they wanted from the dugout, but Marcotte shook it off, and he did that by rubbing on his on his shirt and threw the ball in the dirt. But that's how they shake off the any signs from the dugout. And he should be going just power on power right here. One and two. There it was. He just drove that ball downhill to the outside part of the plate. He's got a live arm. And that's in the air, not very deep in right for Jeremy Giambi. They're one out away from the title. Well, this has been a great field for this College World Series, maybe the most powerful of any of the fields they've ever had, and it's just a shame to see any clubs go home losers, but I don't think they really do. But it, you know, from what we have seen, this has been a, a, a wonderful tournament with some outstanding, exciting baseball. And particularly if you like offense. Many offensive records shattered, including some in today's game. Walbridge trying to keep the Trojans alive. He's 0 for 3. And he has been called back for Glenn Carson, a pinch hitter. Sophomore from North Hollywood, California. Been up once and made it out in this College World Series. strike. You know, that's also neat, too. I know he turned the guy around, took the left-hander out of the line and put a right-hander in, but he's given a kid on his on his bench a chance to get into a College World Series final. I think that's great. Mike Gillespie putting him in there. And the Titans hope that Carson's the answer to the trivia question. Who made the last out when they won their third national championship? Day, trying to finish them off. Did them in earlier with his bat. There's a line drive and a base hit heading for the gap. Miranda cuts it off. And they're not going to take any chances down by six. So it's a long single for Carson, the pinch hitter. And they're still alive with two men on and two down to the ninth, trailing by six. Alfonso Montoya, fastest member of this Trojan team, has come on to run. He's a junior from San Marino, California. He chronicled what Kotze has done with his bat. The two homers, the five runs batted in, tying the championship game record. He is now the all-time career leader in College World Series history in batting average, 517 combined over the last two years. Slugging percentage, 1.103. He now has the College World Series career mark in his second all-time in the College World Series history with 18 runs batted in only in his sophomore year. Ernie Diaz hit a three-run homer in the second. He'd like to hit another here in the ninth. Better not come back, folks, because if you come back, yeah, how are you going to match those numbers? <laughs> it's going to blow your career numbers. Nowhere to go but down. <laughs> yeah, I know. Baseball is not what it used to be. Boy, they play in the fall, play in the spring, 
lift weights, hit batting practice all year long. Long wait. Another row two. In the air and left, not deep. Cal State Fullerton has won the College World Series in 1995. Strikeout for Kotze. But he'll take the fly ball and the celebration that it touched off. Diaz got under it. And when it settled into the glove of Tony Miranda, the Titans of Cal State Fullerton had their third national championship in baseball. Fullerton 11 runs, 8 of them unearned on 12 hits and an error. They left 8. For Southern California, 5 runs, 8 hits, 3 errors, and they left 3. We'll have more in a moment. If you need new tires, you don't need to shop around. Sears Auto Center has all the top name brands and sizes to fit whatever you drive. Goodyear, Michelin, BF Goodrich, always at unbeatable low prices. And right now, all Bridgestone tires are on sale 5 to 15% off, featuring the Bridgestone Road Handler with a 75,000-mile warranty and free road hazard coverage. So hurry into Sears Auto Center today. Last year, I flew a quarter of a million miles. But that's what I do for a living. So I know that for most people, that flight is a big part of what makes a trip good or bad. Some want to work. Some relax. And some, they just want to get away. And knowing the difference, well, that comes with flying a quarter of a million miles and seeing a thousand different faces. Fires away. can be. And Michelle Tafoya is with the winning coach, Augie Garrido. Michelle? Your third national championship. You always said that the unexpected needs to take place in order to win a championship game. But it seemed today everything went according to form. What was unexpected here? No number one seed has ever won in this tournament before. That was unexpected. It's never been done before. So I think that's what happened. As far as the way the team played, that was that's the way they've been playing for a long time. So I, I'm really glad that they won because they're all about the right stuff. I mean, their work ethic's fabulous, their attitude is fabulous, and they really weren't that good to begin with. So it's wonderful to see this happen for them. You also said yesterday that the most amazing thing that's happened to you in this tournament is what you've learned from your players. Yeah. What'd you learn today? What young people can accomplish when they're given the, the room to grow and develop and exercise their own talent to be responsible, how responsible they can be and how far they can go if we just let them and don't build fences around them with our own thinking. I've been, uh, I've really enjoyed the opportunity to learn from this group. The third national championship puts you in quite an elite group of coaches. How, what does this one mean to you? I don't know yet. I, I'm really thrilled for the players. I thought they deserved to win. I really did. Uh, what they did was the way it's supposed to be done, the way you hope you can get it done. And for them to be able to do, I'm just really excited for them and thrilled by it. And the things that it means to me, we'll see later. Uh, right now, I'm just so excited about 
them getting what they deserve. This game doesn't always do that for you. Thanks a lot, Coach. Congratulations. Sean? Thanks, Michelle. We'll be back for the National Championship Trophy presentation in a moment. Time now for the National Championship Trophy presentation. Once again, down to the field and Michelle Tafoya. Thank you, Sean. I'm with Ron Maestri, the chair of the NCAA Baseball Committee. Let's turn it over to Ron. Augie, on behalf of the NCAA and the Men's Division I Baseball Committee, I proudly present you with this National Championship Trophy. Congratulations, Augie. Thank you, Ron. And uh, on behalf of the efforts made by Cal State Fullerton's baseball players, the University, Dr. Gordon, the efforts that he's made to help us make this possible, and the athletic director, John Easterbrook, and most of all, the team and associate head coach, George Horton. Yay! I'm really happy for this moment for them. Thank you. All right, Sean. Thank you, Michelle. Mark Kotze, no surprise, selected as the most outstanding player of this College World Series. He went 9 for 16 as a hitter with three homers. 10 runs batted in, and he pitched three and a third scoreless innings of relief over two games. Congratulations to the Titans, the national champions, back to Omaha after this. Back in Orange County, California, they're celebrating the Cal State Fullerton Titans, third national championship, the most outstanding player of this College World Series, Mark Kotze. He's with Michelle. Mark, in this game alone, what a performance. Two home runs, five RBIs. You finished up the game on the mound, and that's a situation Coach says you like a lot. Yeah, it is. You know, I'd love to be in this situation on the mound with the game on, in the line, or on the line. I, you know, I wouldn't have been put in that situation without my team, and, you know, I just I want to thank them and thank Coach for putting me there, and, uh, you know, it's just a, a thrill to pitch that last pitch in the College World Series. You've accomplished so much, and you're only a sophomore. How do you follow this up? I don't think, you know, I can't really try to follow it up. You know, this is a once-in-a-lifetime type of opportunity. So it makes sure basically I'll come out and refocus and set new goals and, uh, as well as team goals. I know you want to go celebrate with your team. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Sean. Thank you, Michelle. Mark joined on the 11-man All-College World Series team by three of his teammates, catcher Brian Lloyd, Tony Martinez, the third baseman, and Ted Silva. Today's winning pitcher, his 18th win of the season, adding to his national league. More in a moment. The All-American Ted Silva, the winning pitcher this afternoon. He finishes the year at 18 and one, the winningest pitcher in the nation. And there were seven home runs in this national championship game. Two of them hit by Mark Kotze over the first two innings as he drove in five. And you got the Titans off and running on their way to the six-run victory as they win their third national title. And Jeff, we've listened to Augie Garrido for two weekends now talk about teamwork and chemistry and how much everything this team has accomplished is based upon that. And after seeing them in action for four games, you see that uh, that isn't a cliche in the case of his team. It's true. No, it wasn't corny. It was really true. And I believe in this. Uh, the teams that I managed, I tried to do the same thing. It wasn't as successful as he's been, but... Uh, what he has really done is put together a team and they they pull for one another they play the inside game they never it doesn't seem like they ever beat themselves they're they're such a good team at doing the little things they're a good defensive team but they have three all-americans you know and that doesn't hurt to have guys who can step forward silver stepped forward twice for them when it looked like he might be in a little trouble 18 wins in a season for a pitcher is really saying something and then, of course, what can you say about Katsi? It's Superman. I didn't, you know, <laughs> he, he pitches, he hits, he does everything. And uh, just the sixth team is Cal State Fullerton since the College World Series came to Omaha in 1950 to go through the regionals and the College World Series without a single loss. They went undefeated in Baton Rouge in the regionals and undefeated through four games here. And you talked about how they did not beat themselves in this tournament. And USC finally was undone by its fielding problems today as Cal State Fullerton took advantage of the three errors to score eight unearned runs. The Titans of Cal State Fullerton are the national champions, 11 to 5, the final score over USC. Now for Jeff Torborg and Michelle Tafoya, Sean McDonough saying so long from Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha where the Cal State Fullerton Titans have won the 1995 College World Series.
Coming up next, CBS Sports takes you to Potomac, Maryland for live third-round coverage of the Kemper Open.